So let's bring in the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kevin Sambita from Palladium Books. And I don't know which one of these to use. So I use the segment one because it's not really fundamentals. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, guys. Fine. How are you Hello. doing today, sir? I'm good. How about yourselves? We're trying doing, to get my voice back. Just fine. I'm just happy the audio and video is working because, because someone said <laughs> good luck instead of break a leg in chat earlier. And I figured we were all doomed. Oh, and said that I'm a pro streamer, and that's like saying, what else could go yeah, wrong? It's like saying, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> like, come on. Right. Uh, so to get to get us started here, just uh, let me say this here. So as many of you know, because I have a couple things I want to get out to the folks here. Uh, make sure you let me do this up here, because I should have done this first. Uh, sorry, Kevin, I'm going to bore you for just a second here, because oh, I kind of want to set the nature of this here. So there's going to be no segment two today. Come on, everybody clap. We're going to kind of stay calm and rational today. Well, as much as possible. Uh, so there'll be no segment two. You could argue that this is segment two, but we're going to call it segment one just to keep everybody on their toes. And because there is no segment two, this is for me to you out there. Not going to read disrespectful chat. That includes super chats. You know how we do it here? We read all super chats. They're not going to read anything that's, uh, that's just absolutely disrespectful. Crit critical is fine. Disrespectful is not, no matter how much you spend on that. Other than that, we'll just read it when the time is appropriate. We may have to save them for a little bit because I'm not going to interrupt people today like I normally do. Uh, We're going to conduct the two giveaways later, uh, probably about, I don't know, halfway, two-thirds of the way through. We'll do them both at the same time so we're not continually interrupting things. We'll find a good stopping point, do the two giveaways. I've got it ready to go. And finally, everything that Heath and Dog and I say here, and this is for everybody out there, past, present, future, everything we say, we ask, or we believe, comes from a place of love. You guys, we're doing, doing Year of the Palladium books. Yeah. Some of you have tried to critique us for this. Some of you have loved us for it. Hey, we don't care. We love the Palladium games. And that's why we reached out to Kevin, said, hey, could you come on? He agreed to. This is for us. This is amazing. So whether we gush and shill in glowing positivity or we take a somewhat critical stance, know that through and through we love Palladium system and we love the Palladium games we play. All right. I don't really think I have to do too much of an introduction here other than well, say no, that. Kevin, is there any, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I mean, I was, come I on. was getting there. You're, 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 you're a pro. Take, take the stage. I, I'm just some guy they pulled off the street. They said to pretend I'm some guy named Kevin some something. That, hey, remember when the script is in parentheses, <laughs> you don't read it. I told you that. <laughs> Yeah, hey guys, I'm uh, I'm Kevin Sembita. Uh, I'm the founder and chief game designer at Palladium Books. Um, you know, I've I've done a few little games uh, that you guys might know. Uh, we published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. We did Robotech. Uh, Rifts is our is sort of my magnum opus. Um, but you know, we've got, we've done Beyond the Supernatural, Heroes Unlimited, uh, Palladium Fantasy RPG, um, you know, all kind of Nightbane, Mechanoid Invasion, all kinds of stuff. I, I love stories. I love every genre, which, you know, Rifts is sort of the concoction of, of, of everything. Uh, so you can play whatever the heck you want in, in one environment and, um, been doing this for 41 years now. Um, that's, that's sort of the short version. <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess I mean, with that, we can, uh, again, uh, let, me, let me scroll down here because I, I don't have a script, but I definitely have some questions that we can ask and to kind and keep them in order here. And what I'd like to do with this is have a conversation more so than a, than a, I've got a question, get an answer. I have a question, although I do have the question. So for the folks out there, we will try to ask them the questions. I've got a whole ton of them from Discord and your comments. We will try to get to them, but we're going to do it in a conversational format, hopefully here. Uh, so everyone forgets about Mac OS 2 and system failure. Well, everyone should forget about Macross 2. Boom! Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh I'm getting that later. Uh, this, 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 yeah, this but is system like failure. The, system, system failure is also fine. I, it, it wasn't my, my cup of tea, but I had no real problem with it. But, uh, is, it yeah, is, that, it, is that a game or an anime? It's a game. It's a game. Oh, I never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, yeah it, it wasn't very popular. It, it, it was a one around shot. here. But. And, and uh, it, it was our sort of spoof on uh, Y2K. Back yeah. when, uh, oh, was see, I was the Y2K guy for the Air Force for my squadron, so I, you know, that that brings back some horror stories of me having <laughs> to do absolutely nothing but everybody freaking out. <laughs> so, uh, I do want to put this up real quick since we're in in the middle. Thank you very much for the fifty dollars. I, I know you already put it up for a moment there, he thought, but I got to verbally thank somebody who gives fifty dollars. Says, "Yay, Sambita!" Patriotic gestalt. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, so. 
let's let's just go all the way kind of back to the beginning here and uh basically how did you get into the hobby what what provided your impetus to write a book and i guess kind of just do your beginnings up through was it the the wayne street i have it written down here the uh, wayne street wear gamers like kind of beginning through there uh how, how did that all get going for you yeah so i i'm i'm really a comic book guy um i, I grew up poor in detroit and my my first love was comic books and i wanted to be a comic book uh, artist and maybe maybe a writer and uh i loved all forms of storytelling i mean live theater movies comic books novels uh you know books of all kind um and, and you know tv you name it i i loved it i love every form of storytelling and i was always fascinated by it um so i think storytelling was sort of in my blood and then uh, I just kind of fell into role playing. I, I was working uh, as a uh, clerk at an art supply store. And uh, one of the guys there, Julius Rosenstein, who would go on to become one of my employees for like 30 years. Um, but Julius had discovered uh, Dungeons and Dragons and was all excited about it. And, and he and the, the Wayne State University were gamers. They were uh, playing. Uh, D and D and a bunch of other stuff. And he told me about it and it sounded kind of cool, but you know, and, and he just kept talking about it and talking about it. And he's like, Kev, you got to try this. You got to try it. It's really great. So he introduced me to some people who seemed nice. And Eric Woodrick was one of those people. And, uh, but I played another guy's game and, and I realized looking back at it at the time, I thought he was just a jerk <laughs> but, and, and not a very good game master. But I, I looking back at it, I realized you know, not everyone can, can run a large group. And Julius had him, the guy was already running like six games or six players rather. And uh, probably six games too. He was like a role-playing holic. And uh, he, uh, Julius had him add us like, like five other people to his group. And, and he just kind wow. of really ig ignored us. It was D and D it was original D and D and, um, you know, we were all first level nothings and they had been playing for a while. So I think the other players thought they were being nice because, you know, as first player, you know, first level players, we had like a whopping, what, six hit points, <laughs> you know, seven hit points. So it'd be like, finally some action. And, and, and one of the, the, the third or fourth level characters would be, don't worry, little thief. And they'd kind of brush you aside and stand there to, and I'm like, but no, I, I want to fight something. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to do something, anything, you know, take out the trash <laughs> um, so, so the first two games I, I played with this guy, um, I hated it. And so did all of us new guys who were playing with him. And I'm like, you know what? Role-playing is stupid. And, uh, it, it's not as cool as it sounded. And I'm just, you know, it's not for me. And, and again, Julius was, was a great guy. And he's like, no, wait, wait, wait. You're going to really love it. Especially you, Kev. I know it. And I'm like, I don't think so. So he goes, well, let me let me run a game for you. And I always thought these guys were much more sophisticated than me. It turned out this was the first time Julius ever ran uh, a game, but he, he's an excellent game master, outstanding player. Uh, I've gamed with him for more than 40 years now. Wow. And uh, yeah, he, he's just a great guy, a great player, uh, excellent imagination. Anyways, we ran this, this very simple dungeon and it was freaking great i had a great time and my character died at the end being <laughs> an idiot um so we're being chased by gnolls and, and in D D, those were at least at the time they were like giant size creatures and have giant size weapons and we, we pull off all this shit. i bluffed a bunch of people and, and it was just this great adventure and we get out you know it's your classic dungeon you get out you shut the door and it's like a video game that's it then an adventure and i went I open up the door and I flip them off. <laughs> Shook. Giant sized arrow. Oh, the hubris. And, and, I'm, and Julius is like, uh, what's your, what's <laughs> what are your hit points? And I, I don't know. It was like, I probably had like a whole whopping five left at that point. And it's like, Oh, um, you're dead. And I'm like, I'm dead. How can I be dead? You killed me. He's like, uh, but I mean, gee kev you shouldn't have done that and i'm like <laughs> oh yeah that was stupid this game is great that, and, that's and awesome because, because i know too many people who will do plot armor right there be like no no i won't kill you for that no I, you deserved it <laughs> that's right i was in my character was an idiot i was an idiot as a player and i'm like this is fantastic i loved it and i just 
just fell in love with it. And so we started playing D&D. And I guess, again, because of my my storytelling background and I think my comic book background, uh, I was really great at putting together stories. And uh, so I started running uh, a game at uh, well, the Detroit Gaming Center, didn't just sort of the precursor to the Detroit Gaming Center. And, uh, you know, people really liked what I was doing. And uh, the more I played, the more I became dissatisfied with what D&D was, because especially early D&D, where it was more rules playing. And I love the idea of role playing. I mean, I'm not one of those guys who dresses up and runs around and LARPs and nothing wrong with that, but that's not me. And uh, I just sat back and went, you know, I want more story. I want character. I want to do all kinds of crazy things. And, you know, whatever your imagination, wherever it takes you, you should be able to do in my mind in role playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started to tweak things and change things. And uh, meanwhile, I, I got to become very good friends of Eric Woodjick and some other people. Eric, for those who don't know, became, became a uh, uh, outstanding game designer, not just in, in role playing, but but video games and other stuff. And uh, um, he and I and like six other people, eight other people started the Detroit Gaming Center, which was way ahead of its time. We would charge people a whopping dollar to come in and play all night. We had a massive game library. Everyone kind of contributed to it. Nice. And, and the cool thing about that was being at the Gaming Center and, and having so many people, when something new came out, it was there at the gaming center. You got to see it and you got to see what other people were doing, what other companies, plus what was cool about it. Cause I'm, we're talking this, it, it's downtown Detroit uh, near Wayne state university. It used to be a methadone clinic. So he gives you an idea of the neighborhood. That's why Heathen dog wasn't allowed to go there. <laughs> I, I wasn't allowed to go in Detroit. <laughs> like, no. it, 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 it was rough. It was bad. You know, this we're talking 79, 80, and uh, I think we were in a murder capital of the world at the time. So, yep. and, you know, you'd go out with to get your, you know, we had a McDonald's or not McDonald's, a uh, Burger King next door. And it was also a hooker hangout. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, interjection there, there was a, there was a movie that you might remember the Kentucky fried movie. Yes. Okay. There, there was a, there was a line in there where there, there was a guy who was, he was a POW and he, and, and, and uh, he got his head cut off by the bad guy. Another guy comes up and says, no, I'm not going to cut off your head. I'm going to send you to Detroit. <laughs> no, God, no, no. And he was dragged off screaming and crying. This, this was like, this is like a Marine. He was dragged off screaming and crying. Like, no, don't do this to me. How dare you, the humanity. You know, it's, yeah, it's it was a, like that. that was a yeah. great scene. Yeah, well, you know, and growing up there, you don't really think of it that way, right? You think, eh, it's not so bad. Um, but, uh, I live a yeah, mile you know, away. It's, it, it, it's you know, <laughs> and, and we were all gaming nerds. So like you have all these, these, you know, ladies of the night going, Hey baby, you want a date? We're like, I got a date with gaming, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you're the one that gave us the bad reputation. <laughs> <laughs> nerds don't know how to act around girls. Well, we were too poor to pay for them is really what it came down to. Because <laughs> so, so, you know, we, what was cool is, because it was a 10,000 square foot facility. So wow. we had tons of gaming, uh, tons of different game masters, uh, tons of different games. So for me, it was like a hot house environment of, of learning because you got to see every style, every approach. You know, this guy liked stories of puzzles. This guy liked traps and dungeons. This guy, you know, was, was hack and slash, you know, power gamer. This guy, you know, and, and it was all different kind of stuff. Uh, and I just soaked it all up like a sponge. Right. And, uh, you know, I started running my, my, my games and I, I hated telling people no. And, and I found it a challenge letting people bring in whatever they wanted. So before I knew it, I finally had to cap my game off when I had 26 regular players. Wow. Six regular nope. Players. Not going uh, right, to, I, right. I can do it. No. <laughs> and to be fair, it's because of lots of failures, not because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I learned my, my cap is eight after eight. I lose it. Well, for me, eight to 12 is perfect. Wow. Uh, after, cause I mean, I used to run 26 for mm -hmm. like, like four years. Um, so, so eight to 12 is what I, I, I love to play. Um, you know, up to 20 or 22 is easy. Once you start getting past that, it gets, it gets rougher. Uh, I actually played, uh, we had some big Magnum Opus event happening and 
Um, it was your classic, you know, two of the characters were getting married and the villains decided to come out and attack the wedding. And we actually had, I, I ran 32 people and that was crazy and, and difficult. Ooh. Uh, I, I did not feel it was a great gaming session, but everyone, you know, everyone said they had a great time and, but, uh, that, that was my, my, my largest game that I ran, believe it or not, coincidentally was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think Heathen Dog may have been part of that one. I'm not sure. And I think I had 11 cause we brought in a few new people that wanted to try things out. I couldn't contain it. Like it just went off the, off the rails for me as that's where I learned, okay, eight is my hard cap. I can, you know, six to eight is my perfect. I don't like four. I think that puts too much on every individual character. I like to be a little overlap, but uh, the six to eight works out perfectly for me. I just couldn't imagine 20s. I I don't know if I'm jealous or scared of something. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, part of it is you got to realize that, that we were all 20 somethings. So we would start playing at seven or eight o'clock in the evening on Saturday and play till about eight, nine in the morning, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, just enough so, time to get ready for school, get the clothes ready for school, and shower so you didn't smell too badly. Yep, I remember those weekends. And, and, and then we, uh, um, I think, sort of the trick to to running a big group is is sort of a combination of of comic book tropes and uh, um, actual daytime soap opera. Because when you have a large group, just like you do at a party, people start to splinter off into smaller. Like- into yeah. smaller clicks, right? So what you would do is, you know, these six guys wandered off to explore this area or whatever, and I, I say, okay, and I do something with them, and then at some good moment, I go, hold on, especially if it's like, yeah, suddenly this thing pops out, and they're like, wait, what thing? And it's like, hold that thought, Cliffhanger. you guys over here, you know, you on 12. the next episode of <laughs> right, and, and then you know, it, it's like classic soap opera. It's like you know, Lenny is your child. And then it's cuts to some completely other storyline. And that's followed by two other plot, you know, things that are going on in, in the soap opera. And I would do the same thing. And obviously when they fought the big baddie or big bad, bad guy group, you know, the group would coalesce and you got 26 guys fighting, you know, your, whatever the bad guys are, but um, it was crazy. It was fun. It had to be fast and uh, it, it was great. And so what happened is, you know, I'm gaming away, and my, my group pointed out to me, my, my players, that they weren't really playing D&D anymore, that, that I had taken it and changed it so much and had so many house rules and, and differences that it was pretty much a whole new game and that I should do that. I should just fine-tune it, turn it into a finished game, and try to sell it. So I, I, I did uh, try. <laughs> and... and um, Detroit at the time was, was huge in comic books. And, uh, so we had all kinds of comic book conventions on, on a regular basis. We had like, like two that were just absolutely fantastic. I think we had one of the first Star Trek conventions, uh, StarCon. Um, you know, I got to meet all kinds of famous people, which was also very inspiring, uh, to see, see these other young guys who are doing, you know, following their dream. And I'm like, I can do this, but, uh, so anyways, we, we had these two big conventions that was run by the Detroit Metro Gamers group. And uh, I went there and all the major players in the gaming industry were, were there. And, and I shot my game around. You know, I pitched it and nobody was interested in playing fantasy RPG except for Judges Guild. Um, mm. And most people don't know what Judges, Judges Guild. So back when D&D started, they were just producing the core rule books. And Bob Bledsoe, the owner of Judges Guild, sat back and said, hey, there's a market here. People want adventures and advice and that kind of thing. So he went to, I assume, Gary Gygax and said, hey, if you don't want to produce adventure books, why don't you let me do it? And so they said, sure. So 1980, 81, Judges Guild is a $2 million company. I mean, that'd be what these days, $3 million, $4 million? Um, they were one of the big guys in, in the industry. And uh, anyways, Judges Guild said, tell you what, kid, this looks pretty good. I'll give you uh, I'll give you $500 and a 2% royalty. And after <laughs> you, yeah, right. Be excited, right? <laughs> and, and, and after we sell 10,000 copies of your game, that royalty will slide down to 1%. 
down. <laughs> oh, sorry for being popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so I said, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Pound and, sand. Yeah. And he actually hired me to, to do a bunch of art for them. Uh, cause that was my main, my main drive was to be an artist and to be a comic book artist. Um, so he said, well, you know, Hey, I am happy to hire you as an artist. And I said, great, uh, for slave wages, unfortunately, but, um, and uh, I went back and I said, look, you know, for $500 and, and a 1% royalty, I'll just sit on my game. I'm not giving it away. So I tell my guys what happened and they're like, oh, Kev. And they're like, but wait a minute. You have publishing experience. You, you came out with an independent comic book. Uh, unfortunately, 10 years earlier <laughs> before independent comics were a thing. Uh, so, so that tanked. But they're like, you, you published this. You're involved in that magazine and this thing you should self publish it. And I'm like, no. Yes, because this was before <laughs> self publishing was easy. Back back then, you know, 40 years ago, self publishing was unheard of. All all but unheard of be, well, because well, the, of the of the of the logistics that you have to handle yourself and it, you can't farm everything out cheaply. No. You know, you know, little 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 Chinese kids make making books wasn't a thing back then. So everything was super expensive. So how did you get around that? Well, it helped that I was a one man show. Well, um, yeah. I, you know, I, like I said, I, we had published a, a comic book, so I had already, uh, learned the ropes about copyright and trademark. Um, I had a, uh, a printer that could do uh, a local printer that could produce, um, comic book sized, uh, product books. Um, that uh was on you know printed on newsprint that's why for those of you original uh, familiar with the original mechanoid invasion trilogy um the printed comic book size you know newsprint um and and because it was just what i knew and, and i thought i was being smart so i mean I, and so i learned everything from like trial and error uh, from the ground up. Like one of my big lessons was I'm thinking I can produce this 48 or 64 page. I don't remember how big it was uh, game for 30, 32 cents. So <laughs> I can, I can sell it for like, I, I think it was three ninety five was my original price on, on the mechanoid, a complete game. Right. Um, and it was pretty, it was pretty solid. It was pretty good. And the reason I went with mechanoids, by the way, is, you know, I had originally created a Palladium fantasy game. But I had a clear idea how I wanted to do it. I wanted it to be uh, a hardcover or paperback. And that was just out of reach at the moment. To I I'm a poor kid in Detroit. I don't have a pot to piss in. And, um, you know, at the time, I think it would cost $10,000 to do like a 5,000 copy print run. And I'm like, well, f I can't, you know, $10,000 might have been, might as well have been 100,000, right? I, it, it was beyond my reach. And I said, but what if I went smaller? And Eric Woodrick was, you know, very supportive. He's like, yeah, Kev, that's a great idea. You, you know this stuff. You can do this. And I'm like, okay. So so I whipped up the mechanoids. And uh, it had to be a trilogy because, again, I couldn't afford to pay it all. And even then, so, so mechanoids cost me $3,000 to make, to publish. I did most of the art. I did most of the writing. Uh, Eric contributed like a five or ten page section in the back. Uh, William Messner Loeb's who would go on to write uh, The Flash and Wonder Woman. Um, he he was a buddy of mine and he did some of the art, but I did most, I did like 80% of the art, 80% of the writing. Um, and, uh, you know, did the layout. Now, and now the horrible thing is we couldn't afford typesetting. So I thought, I, you know, again, mother of invention, right? And it, it, I sat back and went, hey, brother typewriters, those look it looks a lot like typesetting and not really, but you know, it was better than typewriter looking shit. I went through one of the last classes of typesetting that they had uh, for the air force. One is a graphic artist. Like you're never going to use this, but we have to teach it to you. Oh, that's funny. No, so, I, I, I had the same thing on the communication side there. It had vacuum tubes. And it's like, there's, there's one here in the training base and there's, there's one in a training base in Turkey, but there's, there's no, there's no operation. We just got, we just got to tell you. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a totally obsolete, thing yeah. and, 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 you know so you're talking about you know pasting down you know your art you would take your your your, your typesetting you'd cut it out and you're taking a board i didn't even have that i didn't know what i'm doing so i've got like these big sheets of paper and i'm just gluing it to 
you know, the paper, hell, I was in some cases, like with the, the first couple of weapon books, I'm actually gluing down the original art on these pages. Yeah. I remember doing all that nonsense too. <laughs> it, it was crazy. But uh, so, so, so we come out with the mechanoid invasion and, and oh, because, you know, it's not computer, you don't have, you know, a spell checker. And, and, you know, for people who read our books, they already know this. I'm a terrible speller. And um, <laughs> so the mechanoids, the, the very first mechanoid book actually averages 20 typos a page. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the material ideas are good. <laughs> Are great just you know I, I mentioned mammal uh, there's a section on mammals and uh you know mammal spelled with one m about 300 times you know that, that contributed to I, it to be to be fair i'm a see i'm a decent speller i'm a horrible typer so spell checker is my friend not because i can't figure out how to get the words right i know it's wrong when i see it a typewriter would kill me because i uh oh <laughs> how do i do how do i backspace Oh, and it was crazy. I uh, well, see, I I, I kind of knew I wanted to be a writer and stuff, so I actually took typing, uh, a typing class in in high school, um, so, so that paid off for me. Uh, and then I had other crazy people who were willing to look at my handwritten scrawl, like the first, gosh, probably the first twenty books that Palladium published, I wrote by hand on paper, and then someone else typed it up for me, um, and uh, or turned it into typesetting. Um, but anyways, we, we come out with this book and like I said, I put this, this, this 395 price tag on it. And, uh, meanwhile, one of my buddies from the gaming center, uh, Matthew Ballant came out with this cool little, I got all this stuff here. <laughs> uh, history is about to appear, uh, and real quickly. We'll get to your super chats in a little bit, guys. So you just want to wait for a good part of the conversation. This is more important right now. Well, I'm blithering. You can cut me off anytime you want. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but he he had this cool little again this is before the internet mm -hmm. so and D, D didn't have a lot of illustrations so you you see a big big dax or halberd or whatever you know what's the difference between a broadsword and, and a claymore you know the average person had no freaking clue mm -hmm. so matt ballant was, was a history buff uh, at, at wayne state university and he came out with this little book oh, neat. Called, called Weapons. And it's just a eight and a half by 11 sheet folded in half printed. And it's got all these weapon drawings. That and, looks, I should say that's what I was going to say. It looks very <laughs> familiar to me. Wow. <laughs> right. So, so I'm at, we're at, we're at, I think it was our very first Gen Con. And, and I've got my mechanism. Oh, there you go. Oops. Yep. And he's got his weapon book. And for every one of these I sell, he's selling four or five of these. So I see a market for it. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter, chocolate, <laughs> peanut butter, chocolate. Oh, and this was 375 by the way. And so lesson number one, I would, oh, my God, almost every single person who looked at it, even people who bought it, when we'd say, look, this is cool game. You can, and it, they'd be like, 375 why is it so cheap? What's wrong with it? So you have to price your stuff. To, price to you, price market. yourself in the market, not above, not below. You need the sweet spot or else people will think it, it's it's overpriced. It, it, it's got to be garbage or it's too cheap. It's got to be garbage. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You got it, heathen dog. That's exactly what would happen with this. But I figured that out. And so then... Um, you know, I, afterwards, I, I went to Matt and I said, we need to take this material, put it in a better format. Uh, maybe we could expand because there's like 700 weapons in here. I oh, mean, wow. did copious research. And I said, and he's like, well, I don't understand how we could do this. I go, we'll make something like this for more per money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what if we added armor to it and we'll just call it weapons and armor? And he's like, okay. Let's let's do that, and that would turn out to be our, our first big hit. By the way, this I started. I, I was so poor, it cost three thousand dollars to make this. I had to borrow half of it from a friend's mom, from Bill Loeb's mom. She was a sweetheart. We she, we we read through some of that when we did this because I ordered uh, for your last Christmas uh, special. I uh, I or I got the 
was it the Mechano trilogy? I got the yeah. name of it. And we we read through some of that there. And we were like, wow. I mean, that's perseverance. To me, that's perseverance. I had to give it up. Be like, well, you know, writing was a great idea. I got my three and binder full of notes. <laughs> I'll show my friends. I'm out. Uh, but yeah. well, weapons and armor would be our first huge quiet hit over the next five years, six years. We would sell more than a hundred thousand copies of this. Wow. And weapons and castles and uh, weapons and assassins. So, it, you know, it was just, we had our little hits going, but, uh, you know, and again, we're selling them for pretty small. I mean, you know, I wised up and was charging a whole whopping $4.99. Uh, well, you know, for, back then a dollar went a lot further. It, it, it did. Not far enough, let me tell you. Fair. So I, I was definitely in that, that starving artist thing. But see, it was all okay because all of this was supposed to be temporary, guys. Until really? I broke into comic books. <laughs> I, I was still working at, at trying to get into the comic book industry. I did a bunch of freelance stuff. Uh, I, I did some like bubblegum card designs for, for tops through another artist. I kind of ghosted in that. I did some ghost work for, for Marvel Comics. Uh, I got involved with a company called Noble Comics, which okay. did uh, Justice Machine and Cobalt Blue. Um, Mike Gustavich was the main guy behind that, uh, another local guy. And, uh, you know, I was still working towards my comic book career. And, you know, this was just a fun sideline uh, to make a little extra money. Um, and then uh, when things took off, I'm like, well, I'll just put aside the comic book stuff. And, uh, but I'll get, I'll get back to it. And the next thing I know, you know, like eight, 40 eight some years, years later, later, here you are. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I was into, well, I'm not sort of into all kinds of shit anyways, but that's how, that's how I was familiar with Ninja Turtles. That's how I was familiar with Robotech. Um, I was that comic book guy in my car. I was lucky. Heathen dog. I was surprised to find out you grew up here in yeah. Westland. Yeah. Uh, corner of Cherry Hill and Wayne road. So that, yeah, you're, you're, that would be like five minutes from here. Yeah. Uh, where we are I, I passed by your offices a lot. Uh, How on, come on you never bike? told me the offices were there every time I drove out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, you never came up. <laughs> no, I, every I was, time. What, twice? By the uh, way, you're welcome to come on by anytime. There, see, I, I live in Oak Park now. Yeah, well, that's still not that far. Yeah, no, it's like five minutes. 20, 20, 30 minutes away as yeah. long as there's no traffic. Yeah. He's got, well, he's got a lot of bags, a lot of skeletons in that closet there in Westland. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, well, I, I don't know if it was still around. And if you ever went to it, there was a place called uh, the Reader's Exchange. It actually started out on like Cherry Hill and and uh, something here. I'm pretty sure it was in Westland. And, and they, he was one of the first guys who recognized anime. Anime was going to be huge. Mm. So he had all this anime stuff. Yeah, I, I wasn't introduced to anime until I was older and I was going to Ann Arbor. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was huge. They, they had anime cafes and stuff yeah. back in the early 90s. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. In the 80s, it was hard to find. and uh, But I was well, in the 80s, I was 10. So <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, look at him bragging about how young he is over guy. there, little whippersnapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speak up, Gramps. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, here you, Grandpa. I'm so You're happy because that's usually me on all the streams. So I'm like, for once, I'm like, yay! I'm not <laughs> and they're calling me the Silver Fox on Friday. I don't like that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's let's hit up a couple of super chats here so they don't wait too long, and sure. then uh, th then then we'll, we'll move on here. And, I, and I absolutely... we'll, we'll 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 talk about Palladium Fantasy and and how yep. you actually ended up getting that off the ground once you got enough money. So let's go to the Super Chats first. So we already did a $50 one, but it's $50. So I'll put it up there again for a moment. Thanks again. Kevin Sullivan for $10 says nothing, but you know what? He's happy to be here for $10. We thank you, Kevin. Kevin's been a longtime viewer here, so that's good. Crafty Matt, one of our mods says, my first Palladium game was Robotech because he's awesome. My buddy introduced me in freshman year. We carved out a little five-man gaming group from there. Eventually, we went to Rifts. They had a four-year dog boy campaign. You should have just called that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to make me happy, but okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, thank you for the ten dollars, Crafty. Who also tries to go out. He's he's like a, he's a, what's he? Our not our bouncer, our uh, our leg breakers. He goes out there and makes people pay us. <laughs> yeah, he's our cleric. <laughs> there you go. A uh, couple of uh, non super chats before we get to another one. But uh, original Mechanoids got me into Palladium games wow. back in the day. That's awesome. 
I, I honestly didn't hear about mechanoids until I think Heathen Dog was talking about it for Rift stuff. So yeah, I didn't when, even know uh, it was like original. It was when it was transferred to MDC. That yeah. that's that's when I introduced it to him. Right, yeah. right. Kevin Sullivan again. So you signed my old Mechanoids book at Gen Con eighty nine. You were a big influence on friendly publishers. Not all authors or writers were as friendly. It's good to yeah. hear. It's good comment. Uh, yeah, Malachi, for five dollars. Thank you, Kevin, for all that you and your crew have done for the hobby over the years. Yes, that's absolutely. I agree with that one. Well, and thank again, you thank you. Yeah, I don't say thank you for the money. I'm thanking you for the money by reading it. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. Played him save some of us guys during deployments. Did I play to play him when I was deployed? No, they're all no, they're all playing D&D. Yeah, we we had lo we have lots of guys in the military who buy our stuff. And uh, like when we do our Christmas surprise packages every like end of October through the middle of no of January. You get a lot of AFO yeah, and when we do, when I know it's someone in the military, especially if they're deployed in a combat zone, we always yeah. load them up, man. It's that's uh, awesome. Because I mean, come on, it's it's a great escape. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're they're in this dangerous situation. It's hard to, you know, keep your cool and everything else, man. It's you know, and if it's you a can good release, a I, I can tell you, it's a good release as someone yeah. who's been deployed. Uh, and the last the last one we have here and. Uh, this is good. Um, you know, because you've got plenty of time still. Um, what years, Kevin, think you'll break into comics? <laughs> 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 Thank you, home and all. Uh, you still got time. You still got I time. Do. Hey, you never know. It could be any time now. <laughs> there we go. I recommend, I recommend a Chaos Earth comic. <laughs> there you Ooh. go. Yeah, that yeah, would yeah. be cool. I know Heathen Dog is big on Chaos Earth, and I gotta tell you, I, I like the story of that. But before we fast forward into Chaos Earth, I think we did want to, yeah, we want to talk about how. So, how did Palladium Fantasy itself come yeah. to be? Yeah, and hang on, hang on. Let's let, let's let's set the stage. You, okay, you've got all this money, right? This <laughs> piles and piles of Scrooge McDuck cash from from weapons and armor, weapons assassins, weapons and insert box name here book and you got all this all this money what do you do with it so actually i wish we had all that money uh <laughs> you know again remember we're, we're we're selling the book for a whole whopping five nine four ninety five yeah it costs 50 cents to make you got screwed big duck money right what but do you you're do? selling it you know back then it, it's it's pretty much all uh sold through distribution and uh you know at a six and back then it was a 65 percent discount Ugh. And then I was giving my my creative team a, a nice sizable royalty, but we're doing all right. Uh, I, so to give you an idea, to, to, to also set the stage is in, in 1983. That's when uh, Palladium Fantasy finally sees release, and uh, I, I'm 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 dating the woman who will be my my wife, and I, I ask her to marry her, and I tell her, look, if my plan goes the way it should go, the way things are going here, in three years, I should be making $90,000 a year personally, not Palladium. I mean, just right. me out of Palladium. And, and hey, you know, wait, wait, this, this is when? This is what year? 93. Oh, I'm mean, sorry. 83. 1983. 83. Okay, that is different. 83. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is uh, nowadays, that's, uh, that's easy, you know, early six figures. You know, like 200 and, grand is equivalent with, the, right. with inflation. Yeah. So, so, so I'm like, uh, you know, and, and we're living in this little cracker box, two family house. Uh, we sleep in shifts, um, because we only had one bedroom because the other bedrooms just filled with my books and references and comic books. And, um, so, uh, you know, and I was a night worker, I would work all night long, uh, writing and, and drawing and doing stuff. And, uh, and she worked during the day. So it was great. When when I was sleeping, you know, she was taking care of the kids or whatever and working. We could it worked out great, but because she had two kids from a previous marriage, and I told her, you know, ninety thousand dollars in three years, honey. Right now, I'm, I'm I think I'm I was barely making my my personal income was like ten grand, and, and, and um, she kisses me in the cheek and says, "I'll marry you anyway," because she didn't. <laughs> leave. That's nice. That's awesome. But, you know, you, you have to wonder about her mental state at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole other story. Okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I, I'm, I am getting there. I'm putting money aside. I'm getting there to where I can, 
you know, hopefully publish Palladium Fantasy soon. And one of my crazy gaming guys, you know, my, my gaming group was the Defilers. And, and one of my Defilers calls me up, a uh, guy who worked at GM, and says, Kev, I've got $10,000 that I'm looking to invest. Convince me why I should invest it in Palladium and, and Palladium Fantasy um, and not buy land in Alaska. And I'm like, land in Alaska? So I, I give him my pitch, and uh, he gives me ten grand. Uh, and back that must have some pretty poor land. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, all covered in snow and caribou. Oil money, though. Oil money. Give me that oil. Yeah, you, you have to live there for a certain amount of time, but then every year you get a check. So, yep. hey, you know, can you beat my check? So, so, so Tom Bartold was was the maniac uh, back then. Because again, I. I I tried getting loans from banks and, and the problem with banks was, and it makes sense again, looking at it with, with hindsight, it made total sense. M most businesses, most people don't know this, but the typical small business goes out of, out of business in the first three to four years. Yeah. And when I say most, I mean like 90%, right. Never make it past three years. Yeah. The, so the I don't, worst is a restaurant and uh, the, the safest is a car wash, I think statistically. And that sounds about right. Yeah. And, and uh, so I couldn't get a bank loan, and which was, you know, pissing me off big time, but I, I got it. So I get Tom's 10 grand. Um, he got 20% uh, of the book, the profit on the book. That was our deal. Um, and uh, I was finally able to throw it together. I had done most of the art. I had done all the writing. Uh, at this point, I had had like three or four years to play test the game system. So, so I knew it worked. I knew exactly what I wanted. I, I brought in some people to help me edit. So it was nowhere near as bad as the mechanoids. And uh, we pasted it all up by hand and sent it into this new printer I had found. Uh, and we used this new format. What a lot of people don't realize is that, because um, it's pretty standard in book all over the world now, but the, the soft cover format for large books, eight and a half by 11 books, what's called perfect bound. That was brand new technology back then. And, and nobody in, in the gaming industry was, was, was using it. Uh, and for me, it was just a matter of necessity. I went to find out how to make a hardcover and it was like five, excuse me, the cost was like three or four or $5 more a book. So I needed to have like 20 or 25 grand to do a hardcover. And I'm like, that's not going to work. And my wow. printer said, hey, we got this new technology in. Um, it would cost you like like a buck 50 to make this book as a soft cover book. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, and we did. And, you know, I'd like to say the rest is history, but it, it helped. And it was funny, too, because I the hard part back then is you know, there was very little direct sale unless you were hitting like 9,000 conventions. And, and really in the 80s, early 80s, th there weren't even a lot of gaming conventions happening yet. Mm -hmm. You know, gaming and, and, and RPGs was really just kind of taking off. I mean, they were taking over Origins at the time. You know, board games and miniature games, ironically, um, were, were fading out and role-playing thanks to D&D &D, was the big new hot thing. And, uh, but there weren't a ton of conventions. And plus, I couldn't afford to travel to a lot of places anyway. So uh, everything was through distribution. And how I got distributors is I would, I, fortunately, there were some, I forget who was doing the ads, whether it was an industry thing or not. But in some trade magazine, model retailer or something, they would print like a list of distributor names and, and addresses. And so I would put together my little pitch sheet and, and uh send that out in a product to all these distributors. And I just kept sending them and sending them and sending them. I mean, in the more conventions I started to go to, um, I started to get more uh, information from people. And one of my earliest contacts was uh, Jordan Wiseman at FASA. Oh, wow. Um, he, I, told you, he, I told you before as a Battletech guy, so that's actually a name I know. <laughs> so, so you're going to like this, Max. So, so first of all, um, this is before Battletech, of course, and I, I met him at a, I forget what convention. It wasn't a gaming convention. It was some kind of book convention that I went to. I forget where. And for some reason, Jordan and I just, just hit it off. And he was awesome because his company, I think, was a year older 
and was certainly larger than than, than mine. And he was willing to share real information. That's like awesome. Much, yeah, and what he, he great guy, uh, genius game designer too. And uh, so he would share with me what their press run was, um, what what their uh, sales were, um, so who some other people were, which was great. Um, so there's one like the, 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 my, my Moby Dick, my big white whale was to get at the time, the number one game distributor, which was uh, windmill hobbies. Okay. And, um, I couldn't get a response. It would never take my calls. I'm like, that's fine. So I kept sending shit to them. Every time a new product came out, I had a ton just backed up in the corner. They're like, what are we going to do with all this stuff? Start selling it for you. (laughs) (laughs) And, 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 so, so the guy who ran uh, Windmill Hobbies was was a very sweet curmudgeon of a man, um, kind, of, kind of a grumpy guy, um, Joe Budrix, uh, really, really good guy. And, and, and he calls me up and says, yeah, I got this fantasy game in front that you produced. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, it looks really great. You did all the writing. You did all the art. I'm like, yeah. He goes, that's really ambitious, kid. And, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm finally going to take, I'm going to take a bunch of your stuff. I, let me get some of these weapon books and let me get this fantasy book. And I'm like, that's great. And I'm like, and Joe, you're going to do really well with it. I promise you, because your, your competitors are, are kicking ass with this. And he's like, no shit, kid. What do you think I'm calling you? <laughs> 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 but he was a really great guy because something, something nobody was doing. It was all. When, when people in the hobby buy, it's something that's called uh, direct distribution or direct mm-hmm. direct sales, which means if they're buying 20 copies of your book um, and, and they only sell five, they eat the cost of those other 15 that didn't sell. Or they sell them out, blow them out at a discount or just toss them in the trash. And uh, Joe says, I, I believe in this book so much that I want you to send me like 200 and I'm going to insist wow. that major stores take five copies each. And if they don't sell, sell them in a month, you know, I'll take them back and don't worry, kid, I'm not going to charge you. And right. that, that was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> no absolutely. One did that. And, and he didn't have to do that. Um, so I, I, I had some, I had some good luck in, in some of this, and, you know, some of my hard work pay, paid off. Well, a lot, lot of patience and persistence though, as well. I mean, I mean, it might look like luck from that from that side, but by just continuing to do this at the same time, sooner or later, that right door gets kicked down that helps you out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the the, if, uh, the longer you can do something, the greater chance luck will strike. I mean, it's it's it, it's a numbers game, just like the lottery. You know, if if you buy enough tickets, you eventually yeah. win. But unlike well, a lottery, you, you have to buy 178 million tickets over 178 million days, <laughs> right. and then your odds are going to hit. But for something like this, you know, you stick with it for year after year after year, your break will come. You just got to hope that you don't run out of will or run out of money yeah. before it finally does. Yeah, I, I agree with that com- com- completely. And uh, so fun fact with, with Battletech, I was the original artist they wanted to do the art for for battle droids battle droids yep i i don't own a copy of it i never did because i wasn't that deeply into it at that time but knowing what i know of course probably for like the last 30 years oh man <laughs> i wish i would have had a copy of that well they they uh y- y- you know they 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 pitched me the game and i said it sounds great and, and they showed me a bunch of references and uh which i didn't know at the time was was robotech a, a lot of it well um, <laughs> there is, that's that's the harmony gold thing i was talking to you yep. about yesterday so yeah and, 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 and um, they they couldn't they, they couldn't meet my page rate because you know drawing mecha is a pain in the ass you know it's a yeah. lot of rulers and and, mm-hmm. and it's ellipses a lot of precision and, work yeah and, and so I said look I, I got to get a hundred bucks a page and they're like that's insane we'll give you sixty and I actually thought about it and I'm like nah I can't do it plus I got my own stuff cooking mm-hmm. and uh, so. Uh, but yeah, the, I was the original guy they wanted to tap to, to do well, that. That'd been awesome. All right. Well, that that is an excellent stopping point. We can look at some more chat while we will move on to uh, to our next history lesson. <laughs> uh, start. All right. So forget comics. When are we getting a riffs movie? I, hey, hey, I got that question on the 
don't, don't <laughs> read ahead. Uh, well, we will come back to that. I'm going to keep that one started. We'll come back to that because I actually have a, a, a broader question, but it includes that as well in there. So sneak peek at a, at a future question. Hey, Kevin, what animes are you into these days? Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't watch a whole lot of animes um, anymore. I, I've had some uh, recommendations. Um but uh, you know, my time is so limited. It seems like I'm, I'm working all the time. Um, so, uh, and when I'm not working, I'm trying to watch stuff that my sweetheart also likes to watch. Uh, so I don't watch a whole lot. My, my last big favorite was Cowboy Bebop. I, I love that. Oh wow, that is pretty dated. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I started watching that like uh, when I was still in Germany. So I guess that'd be two years ago when I heard that there's gonna be a live action thing, and uh, mm -hmm. I got past the first episode. I think <laughs> that's it. I'm well, so if, I, if, I, I, if you haven't bad. seen Assassination Classroom, I recommend that. I, I did uh, I did anime reviews for about two years. Yeah. It was one of the only five star animes that that I that it was only one of the only animes I gave five stars. What's it called? Assassination Classroom. It's it's on that's, Hulu. That's the emoji face guy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's it's on it's on Hulu. You know you, you can watch it there. It's also on Crunchyroll, I believe. But uh, yeah. I, I recommend that one. It's uh, it has everything. It has character uh, building. It has arc. It has excellent story, and it has a definitive beginning, middle, and end. And then you're done. I know Chat's gonna hate story. me, but just just so Chat knows, so you don't have to start railing on me here. I'm just not an anime guy. It's not that I hate it. I just you're I'm not, not an anime not, guy. That's why <laughs> I, I understand it. that. Yeah, it's not for everybody. I mean, there's some. I mean, the thing is, for me, the anim My problem with a lot of anime is that anime in general looks gorgeous but sometimes the stories are kind of just like yeah but well, there's uh, anime for me so my wife is japanese so she watches anime but i, I mean i try to tell this to people um and you probably know this but there's literally anime for everything if yeah. you can find it as a tv show everything from reality tv to sports to to cartoons whatever uh, there's an anime for it Oh yeah, out there. So, um, so it's the same thing with their comic books. They, mm -hmm. they when I discovered uh, a bunch of Japanese comic books, uh, um, manga before, oh, no, yep. it, I, I kind of discovered it. Cause I, I worked as a bartender at a Japanese steakhouse, and, and they oh, brought nice. some in, and I'm like, "What is this?" Uh, and, and they sold some to me and gave some to me, and then I tracked them down through uh, Reader's Exchange, okay. and because uh, they were getting some in. And yeah, every subject. I mean, there were comic books about this kid going fishing. That's all this kid did, as far as I could tell, because obviously slice I can't. of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah, you name it. You know, demons and monsters and and everything, it, which is pretty cool. I always thought it was great that they, especially at the time in the seventies and eighties, uh, even nineties, that that. Japanese culture accepted comic books as for all ages uh, yep. and very much adult. There's a lot of adult stuff out there. Um, and, uh, you know, I like a lot of anime. When, when anime nails it, I mean, there's just some great stuff. Yep. I'm going to let um, Heathen, right. Heathen Dog start this one. I'm going to let him read it because I don't know the pre the. Okay. Uh, wish I could join in. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, ask ask Kev about my long term campaign starting in Chaos Earth. Now oh, the oh, the, ask, the really okay. cool thing about starting in Chaos Earth, I, I I I didn't do it. I started in Heroes Unlimited that turned into Chaos Earth. But you could easily turn Chaos Earth, de depending on your characters, you know where you are in, into a into a uh, a Dark Ages campaign before Rifts. You know you you can flesh out all that stuff that isn't really yep. stated. It's more broad broad strokes in the beginning of the riffs book you can actually you know for your campaign for your world you can say exactly what happened during this time and that time and that's that's a that's a that's a really good idea it, it gives the game master a lot of leeway you, yeah, you just have to make sure you, you you get the right stuff you know st louis arch bad place D detroit T uh, toronto bad place you know you know it's all so, well, i'm sorry windsor detroit and windsor bad was and I always wanted to know: Was that on purpose? Did you make Detroit a giant shithole, like on purpose? <laughs> was it was it like meta for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, what 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 I tried to do is, um, I, I I wiped out a lot of the big cities so I could focus more on a bunch of the smaller cities that never get any kind of coverage in in books or movies or tv shows 
uh, one of the things that, that I realized is um, when they did uh, Beverly Hills Cop with, with uh, Eddie Murphy. Yep. And it was filmed, parts of it was filmed here in, in Detroit. And, and like Detroiters, me included, went crazy because, oh my God, Detroit's finally being shown. And I realized, gee, why does everything have to take place in Chicago, New York, LA, you know, sometimes San Francisco? You know, there's a whole rest of the world around here. So I, I kind of like, destroyed all the major cities and oh focused. okay okay so it, it was more to just dis destroy the possible setting not because yeah detroit is a shithole so we will make it a, a supernatural <laughs> yeah. wasteland well, of, hey, of death I, and I think he was attacking me personally because he put bugs in my home state so i mean <laughs> that is you know true, yeah. about bugs. bugs in wisconsin <laughs> well minnesota Bad bugs. uh yeah so well and and with that like uh my hometown is in uh, the well i think there are only two the grumpier old men movies so the, right. <laughs> most of that is filmed in my actual hometown, even though they call it YZ, it's my hometown. Oh, that's cool. Uh, in, in FYI, I, I was always a big fan of Detroit. I, I was one of those people who uh, believed Detroit was coming back. You know, I grew up I, when Detroit still had <laughs> Detroit still had some cool stuff. And sadly, it just I mean, it feels like it might be finally they might be making moves to get it to come back. But nuke it from space. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're only a mile away. That will get I'm you only too. a mile away. You know, I'm only a mile away, but I, I, I have a bunker. I'm good. <laughs> oh, <there you> go. <laughs> uh, so uh, they were talking about the cut. This is this is a. Uh, I'm oh, sure you know about curl. this. Right. Yeah, we all have them. We all have we our all Palladium have the, book cover curl. The, the books the, that we the, use. <laughs> in in all of the 80s and 90s books, the laminate right here always yep. comes out. Always starts to curl. Just that's how you know when somebody used the yeah, book. That's how you know when someone uses the book. It starts right here and peels away. <laughs> now, why the hell is that? Why is it with no other books except Palladium books? Because you've been using them for uh, twenty or thirty years. But I got other books that aren't Palladium <laughs> that I've been using too that have the same, you know, design. You know, I'm obviously they're made of something else. So, uh, you know, uh, maybe they don't have. Maybe they don't have separate. They don't have the, the uh the, the curl up and this one's not as bad the conversion book isn't as bad but uh all of them end up having it if the other if ones, used no. that was that was actually a rite of passage to some degree it's like oh you got the curl too obviously you like the game. <laughs> yeah uh the last one i have here is uh you're not using your plate in books right if they don't have curled covers and tears in the plastic <laughs> there you go uh absolutely so good stuff there I, i'm gonna keep nerdy ogre starred we'll come back to that one um, I forgot where we left off and that's, that's kind of bad, but, uh, so uh, we, are, we are now, uh, we, we are now going to talk about, uh, we, 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 uh, just went through the, the 20%, uh, for, for palladium fantasy. And was that an instant hit or did, was that a slow burn? How did that go? Um, I would say it was a slow burn. I mean, I guess, yeah. see what, one, one of my big advantages in starting my company is I, I compared everything to the comic book industry. So I thought I was doing terrible if I was only selling five or 10,000 copies of a book in a year. And, and, and apparently that was like really great, <laughs> especially the role playing game. book game. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't know it. So I was like, God darn, I'm only selling, you know, 5,000 copies. I got to keep working at this. Um, so compared to like, like the success of Ninja Turtles and Robotech and Riffs, um, it was more of a slow burn, mm -hmm. but I mean, over time we, we would sell more than a hundred thousand copies of, of the oh, RPG. Did, well. did you make your, your three-year promise? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Outstanding. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. Okay. Now <laughs> going from Palladium fantasy, what was, what was, what was next and, and why? So, so the next new game line. So we did a couple of books. We, you know, we did a couple more uh, weapon series books. Right, right. Your, 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 your next, you know, in in the Palladium universe. What, what was your next genre that came TMNT. after? TMNT. Oh, actually, no, that's okay. not true. Uh, it was Heroes Unlimited. Heroes Remember, Unlimited. Okay. Because I'm a because I'm a comic book comic guy. book guy. Exactly. Yeah. I I, I knew it was going to be one or the other. I well, well, everyone, one. everyone thought. In fact, you would not believe how much shit I got from from my friends who were like. Kevin, you're this comic book guy. You eat, live, breathe comic books. How is it you're not doing a superhero game? And I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> you, you know, I, I just I was hot on fantasy and and you know mechanoids and some other stuff. And I mean, what was out at the time for superhero games other than the face Marvel? Was um, there, were there any other ones? Yeah, the villains and vigilantes. 
Oh, that's that old? I didn't realize yeah, it was that yeah. okay. Yeah, by, by Jeff D. Um or, or yeah, that's right. Um yeah, that, that was one of the early superhero games and, and it made a little bit of a of a splash. Excuse okay. me. And uh and then then yeah, Marvel superheroes came out, I think a year after I want to say that was 85. Might yeah, have been I thought, I thought it was 84. It might be well, 84. 84, 85. Yeah. And then I just, you know, ideas started to percolate. A lot of times for me, I need things to kind of gestate and, and percolate inside my head to develop. And, and Heroes Unlimited started to develop. And I came out with that in 1984. Um, and, and that did, you know, about as well as Plenty and Fantasy. It, you know, it, we started to build momentum. Build. Yeah. So it was just a slow build. And, uh, you know, and, and that was that was cool. And it was great working with Jim Steranko. I mean, uh, he was a legend, still is a legend. Um, and he was one of my personal, you know, idols in, in comic book art and storytelling. So uh, it was a pleasure working with him. And uh, it was funny. I had a lot of people come up to me and go, how did you get Jim Steranko to do a cover? And I'm like, um, Alex tracked them down somehow, and I called them up and told him what I do. And I said, "What would you charge?" And he said, "This." And I said, "Okay." <laughs> you know, it was as easy as that. Um, but uh, and it was neat because I, I developed a little bit of a relationship with him. Uh, we, we were pretty. I wouldn't say close friends, but we were we were friends for like the next fifteen years. Um, so that that was very cool, and. Uh, and then TMNT, baby. It, uh, there we go. Now we're talking to me finally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Max is a Max is a big fan of TMNT. Now the uh, how hard was it to to actually start up TMNT? What what hurdles did you have to go through to get the name to you know be able to get the license to you know use all of the all of the ideas from somebody else's. It, it, it was super easy. So, uh, uh, especially back then, mainly because um, Kevin and Pete were, were even more green than I was uh, at, at, at publishing. So they're both sweet guys. You, you know, they, they made a gazillion dollars and it could not happen to two nicer human beings. I mean, they're just really great salt of the earth people. Uh, I think Kev was like 24 at the time and, and Pete was like a whopping 30 or 32 and uh, so what happened is, you know, as a comic book collector, I kept hearing about this hot new comic. And, and for the life of me, I could not get a copy of TMNT number one. It was always sold out. I could never get a hold of it. And finally, I, I got a copy of uh, the second issue. And, and I read this book and I'm like, this is really good stuff. And, and I, it was talking about bizarre. I, I turned to my wife and I said, this would be a really great game. Uh, a role-playing game if we could do all kinds of different mutant animals um and the phone rings and it's some palladium fan who says have you seen tim and tmnt the comic and i'm like yeah i think it'd make a great game and i'm like me too and he's like i'd like to write it and i'm you have like a, you have a mic in here what the <laughs> <laughs> are you rushing <laughs> exactly I, it's like yeah it, 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 am i being spied on I, but anyways um he uh he said yeah i think it'll make a great game i'd love to do it for palladium and i'm like well you know you can write it on spec but you know we got to track down uh eastman and laird first and he's like i already have and i'm like what <laughs> he's like yeah here's some the juice but okay <laughs> oh, so obviously he had the idea first and before he came to you he had, he had everything lined up yeah. So he had the telephone number. He hadn't actually talked to them at all. And uh, I, I called them up and I think I spoke to Peter first. And uh, again, you know, really nice guy. I told him what we did and, you know, how much I love the book and I'd love to, you know, develop this game. And he's like, great. And I, I talked to Kevin and, and talked to them some more. And they're like, you know, plus I love their art. And I said, you know, I'd love you guys to do. So here's my plan. I said, we want it. And one of the reasons I, 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 I did this is I saw it as an opportunity to break into the mom and pop comic book stores, um, which at the time really only had like, like D and D and, and occasionally Steve Jackson stuff. And, 
uh, you know, this and that. And, and I'm like, I, I want to get into the mom and pop comic book shops. Uh, this is my doorway in. And I said, I, I want to produce a book that would be priced at a price point where comic book collectors would say, because originally released at, at $9.95. And I'm thinking comic book collectors are going to look at this. They're going to see an original Kevin Eastman cover. They're going to see, you know, art by, you know, Eastman and Laird. They're going to see a 10 or 12 page comic strip done special for the game. Um, that hasn't appeared anywhere else. So they're going to say, I don't know, nine ninety five. That's kind of pricey because you know back then, a comics were what a buck fifty. Uh, oh, fifty. What are you talking about? Like seventy cents? Or maybe <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and and you know, and that were and so. By the way, my my advice to anyone looking to license anything: there's only three reasons to ever license a, a product. One, you love it. Two, it's going to open up doors. Or three, you're going to make a pile of money. And any one of those is good enough to get a, to get the license. But in our case with Turtles, it was all three. Uh, and same thing with Robotech. And that's like just perfect. So uh, this guy, you know, so so I, I'm excited about it. And the more I get to know Kevin Pete, I'm excited. Um, and, and uh, you know, they're kicking out art and stuff already. And uh, I got plans for things. And the manuscript comes in. I've been advertising team and and other strangeness for like uh i don't know three or four or five months already oh, wow. uh, in, in, including ads in, in dragon magazine right uh which weren't cheap and i get the manuscript from this guy and we didn't see eye to eye on what it should be in the first place he he always thought it should focus completely on the turtles that people want to play the ninja turtles and i'm like no you forget about usagi ujimbo and uh and uh i forget there are a couple of uh, i forget the name of the yeah, the radioactive hamsters or whatever yeah. the hell they were. Yeah, there were a whole bunch of them at the time. And, and no, he just, he was obsessed with turtles. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not the way to go. Um, even though there's four of them, plus you can throw in Casey Jones and you can throw in a couple other guys, you know, Splinter. But people want, you know, role players want more. They want a world and they want to be able to do stuff, not just play the turtles. And he couldn't see it that way. So he turns in this manuscript that, that was just, awful it was everything turtles should not be and i'm like i'm sorry i can't use this uh and again we had that philosophical argument about what the game should be and i said sorry dude i uh i can't i can't go with this and and heathen dog you were asking how difficult it was so kevin or kevin and pete were so green that they said well gee kevin we like you we trust you we don't know nothing about contracts. Why don't you just write up the licensing agreement? Wow. It, it, okay, it, it, okay. It, I, I am not ashamed to say I would have taken these bastards to the cleaners. <laughs> I would have I, I I am not an honorable man. <laughs> I would have I would have robbed them. You blind. heard it. <laughs> at, the, at the end at the end of this contract in fine print, I would own the entire IP. At the conclusion of the contract. Well, and your kids, just in case they wanted to try to fight me for it. <laughs> well, well th th that's the thing. I guess I guess I am an honorable man. And uh, so uh, I, I wrote up what was a fair contract uh, to the best of my ability. And, and like 15 years later, when their licensing agent saw it, he went, holy shit, do you realize that Kevin has the right to publish TMNT in perpetuity? And they're like, I don't think that's what he meant to do. And, and, and so they called me up. Uh, I think it was Kevin called me up and goes, Kev, we just talked to our agent and it's in the contract. I mean, that, that wasn't your intention, was it? And I'm like, no. And, and, and they're like, uh, would you mind signing a new agreement where that's very clear? And I'm like, yeah, of course. What? So, and, and I ended up kind of, well, well <laughs> this will blow your mind even more. As it turns out, I, I'm I'm kind of the guy who who brokered the whole turtle franchise. Um, Kevin Pete. So I, I was going after a, a different license, and I'm talking to this this licensing agent, and uh, he uh, uh, and, and I had known him through through Robotech, uh, and, and and so. Uh, I'm talking to Mark, Mark Friedman, who would go on at Surge Licensing, who would go on to make turtles everything that you guys know that it, that is turtles in the mass market. Okay. 
and, and, and I'm trying to get this other license. And, and every time I call, it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Does that make you smile? Every time I hear that name, I smile. And I'm like, I, I guess, okay. okay. He's like, you know, and we would talk some more about some other stuff and be like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Do you think kids would like it? And I'm like, well, you know, at the time my kids were like six and eight. And I'm like, yeah, they, they love the comics and, and they're they're thrilled that I, I published the game. And he's like, I can't get it out of my mind. And, and we would talk more and more about the turtles and, and the potential market for it. Uh, and he's like, do you think they make great toys? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a toy guy too, right? You know, I'm like, yeah, of course they make great toys. Um, and, and, and we just keep talking about it and talking about it to the point where I'm feeling uncomfortable. And I'm like, Mark, <laughs> <getting> weird. <laughs> you, you're, you're a licensing guy. You understand I don't own the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, you need to talk to Kevin Pete. Because uh, he's like telling me how, yeah, you know, there's this new company coming out. I, you probably have never heard of them, Playmate Toys. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they're doing Star Trek right now. That's right. They're doing Star Trek. And, 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 and he's like, I know the president of the company. I think they'd be really interested in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'm like, that's great. Talk to fucking Kevin Pete. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm not the guy. So he says, hey, tell, you know, next time you talk to them, tell them I'm interested. Ask them if, you know, and so I, I talk to the guys. I say, hey, there's this guy. And, and, and get this. They're like, I don't know. I, I don't think we want to do this. And, and I'm like, look. It can't hurt talking to this guy, Mark. If he's the real deal, I mean, you don't have to agree to anything immediately. Just listen to what he has to say. And if you like what he has to say, go with it. And if you don't, then, you know, don't. So they gave me permission to give them their number to Mark. And Mark called them. And the rest is freaking history. So wait, wait. Uh, so we have, we have you to blame for the cartoon? Uh, unfortunately, the cartoon <laughs> and the toys... Okay. It would be my right. own undoing, Max, because the problem is Turtles is, is huge for us, right? It explodes. It's hot as hell. And then when the cartoon, and, and more importantly, when the movie came out mm. in, in, what, 89 or 90? Um, yeah, somewhere around there. It, it, it kidified mm -hmm. the Turtles. So what happened to us is, in fact, with an anticipation of the, of the Turtles, Turtles was so hot. We, we were selling 2,400 copies of the core rule book a month. Oh, wow. For the year leading up to the movie. After the movie comes out and, and the toys and, and the cartoon has been, um, you know, renewed to be this little ongoing series and there's a gazillion toys for kids, we see our sales plummet. Yeah, this isn't mm. cool anymore. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Basically, Turtles became Mickey Mouse. And there was no self-respecting teenager or college kid who wanted to play Mickey Mouse, the role-playing game. Mm, fair, fair enough. And so our sales plummeted. I mean, I never saw anything like it. It was like 2,400 copies, 2,000, 1,500, 1,000. I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's bottoming out, you know, it, it six, you know, 800, 600, 400. And I'm like, holy oh, wow. shit. Now it's not even worth printing. <laughs> well, exactly. It, it just got yeah. to the point where, you know, that's why we, we finally let the license go. I wish I hadn't, um, but uh, we finally let the license go because we said, well, you know, we played it out. We made lots of money. You know, I, I know Kevin Pete. Uh, you know, again, to give you an idea how great Kevin Eastman is, um, he, he, you know, I mentioned to him that I still couldn't find a copy of the damn you know, number one and, 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 and like a week later in the mail, a copy of number one arrives first printing. And I'm like, what? And, and uh, Kev calls me up and goes, yeah, did you get the package? I'm like, yeah, I just got it. And he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, yeah, it's one of my last three copies, but you know, I wanted you to have it. Well, that's awesome. Great guys. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even now I can tell you somebody who likes to run now after the bomb, uh, to try to get people to play it, 
<laughs> it's like, I mean, between some modern sensibilities, we'll say, but even looking, oh, is that, is that, am I going to be singing, say, saying Kawabanga and singing Teenage Mutant? No, no. The comics are dark. Like, I got to be honest, I haven't read the comics. I've read parts of them, but I haven't read them. But even the parts that I read is like, oh, that's much different than what, uh, yep, <laughs> what was presented on that cartoon. Yeah. So, uh, like, no, think of this. Plus, I also use the, the your um, uh, Compendium of Modern Weapons book. Yeah. So I use penetration value. So basically guns murder people in, in my <laughs> games. Right. Uh, and all of a sudden it becomes a very deadly game and they think twice about it. But just to get somebody to try to play it, like I'm not playing that silliness. I, I'm going back to D&D or something else. It's, it is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, all right. I mean, we're seeing more now. We're, we're seeing a lot more interest in, in After the Bomb that we, you know, because we continued that and Woodjick wrote after the bomb role-playing game so we're seeing a lot more interest in mutant animals again i don't know if that's just something in the zeitgeist or right. he TV likes that nostalgia. i'm not a fan no he's not a fan <laughs> at all i'm not a fan but uh while while, while max looks at uh, some of the star chat i'm going to show you here uh this is a a comic from 91 and it's not in any protection because it's new warriors and it kind of sucked but uh in 91 it was a dollar Oh, <laughs> so in in eighty five it was seventy or seventy five cents. Yeah, probably. Yeah, hell, now, might have uh, still been fifty. Also, in the late eighties, early nineties is when comics started to charge for the for the title, not the size of the book. Like here's the Infinity Gauntlet. I got the whole series right here, but here's the Infinity Gauntlet. It's the same year, but it's two fifty. Same <laughs> amount of pages, but it's two fifty. Same same style of art, same paper, same ink. But it's two fifty. This this hurt. I couldn't buy it when it came out because two fifty. F that. I'm not spending that. <laughs> and then later on, I spent eight bucks for it. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story is get it when it comes out. <laughs> All right. So for five dollars, smashed it. It says uh, when I was living in Lexington, Kentucky, my friend was so happy when I told him that Riffs actually had some notes on it. I don't know what that means. But Riffs we got five dollars for it. Thanks, smashed. <laughs> <laughs> some notes on it what do you know what he could be talking about no no he'll okay post, he'll post on right, our discord well, and correct still us. here move on uh, i mean give, give us give us more in the end uh so was uh, it fabrice am i saying that right fabrice yes uh palladium is not known in the eu any possibility to see a translated version french german spanish italian etc for eu people uh, I, I would love that. It, it's just a matter of putting it together. Um, Getting a European distributor. Yeah, well, or, or typically it's a European publisher. We're actually right. looking into some ways to do that Okay. Uh, right, right now, but God knows when or if we'll be able to pull it off. We have, uh, if you love your license, it, uh, yeah, if you love your life, it's license, it shows Robotech and TMNT had real love in those game books. I agree. I mean, again, as a non-anime person, I thoroughly enjoyed Robotech. Uh, as I'm not even a comic book person. Yeah, everybody knows I like anthropomorphic animals. I got a couple other games that deal with that, but uh, I liked playing TMNT. I mean, I, I always tell people this. You, you know, Heathen Dog likes his superheroes. I'm like, oh, look at you wearing your spandex, your underwear, and the outside of your pants. You know, uh, for for <laughs> me, I imagine the grizzly bear going rawr in your face, and not not some cartoon thing, and ripping out your throat. So, I mean, which one's actually the cartoon? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, and finally here we have a uh, good thing we still have after the bomb that is right now there's some things after the bomb i'm not a huge fan of but you know what i don't think there's a game book i have behind me that doesn't have at least one or two pages i'm like yeah yeah so so it's good stuff and i'm glad we went through it here and i made one of my favorite after the bomb characters ever on this stream oh nice it's weird uh pigeon. so yeah this, what no it wasn't a pigeon but it was a it was duck a i oh, misrolled right. it should have been a pigeon but you made yeah. it a duck well, it's because I misrolled. I I made it correctly. So, anyway, uh, all right, hold on here a second. And then, oh, setting notes on Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that uh, in a little bit if we have time. We're kind of still doing you know just a historical conversation at the moment. I have some questions about that smash. So, uh, if we have time, we'll get to that. So, I I, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, so, sorry, forty years, lots to cover. Oh, that, yeah. and this is great. <laughs> Okay, we're 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 gonna skip ahead after we after we do the comments. Are we done? Was that yeah, it? We are done with comments. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're gonna skip ahead a little bit because you know time is of the essence, and we're gonna go to riffs now. What made you think of taking pretty much everything you've made so far 
and comics and maybe even influence from a couple of movies I can think of and smash it all together into a role playing game with so many different settings, so many different kinds of creatures and occupations and powers. And what what possessed you to think that this would be something people would buy? Two, two, two main things, I think. One, my style of gaming is I like to let my players go wherever they want to go. So I, 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 I'm, I'm very improvisational. And um, so, so and obviously, I love all those damn genres. But the other, the other big reason was I was constantly arguing with people throughout the freaking 80s that you could do it. They all said you could not do it. It was impossible. You couldn't mash all, all those right. ideas, all those genres into one setting and have it make sense, have it feel plausible and, and fun. And I'm like, but you can, I'm kind of yeah. doing it now. And uh, so I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean like uh, Marvel, uh, uh, all your other, all your other role-playing games, Marvel influences. I think there's some heavy metal influences in there and just mash it all together and create this entire world. Now it obviously took off, but again, uh, com compared to Palladium Fantasy, TMNT, Robotech, which were by your words, a slow burn where it took a while to build, was the same true for riffs or was it a hit right away? So, so turtles and in Robotech were both instant hit hits. They, they were our barometer for what we thought was a mega hit. Okay. So, so, so to give you an idea, um, Turtles, we printed 10,000 copies. We sold out in three months. Okay. You know, printed another 10,000 copies, sold out in, in another three months. Same thing happened with Robotech. So when I did riffs, I'm like, man, I think this is going to be big. I think this is what people are waiting for. Uh, Kevin Long, my main artist, was also 100% behind it. And, and, and I'm thinking, man, if it's a hit, if it's even close to what Turtles and Robotech is, you know, this will be great. And, uh, you know, I, I, I worked on it, developed it over like three and a half years. Uh, and, and then probably the actual writing and, and final design was a good solid six months straight. And, and at that point, I couldn't tell if it was good or bad or, or what the hell it was. You hear animators talk about that, where they, they plot the story and like halfway through, because it takes typically three years to do an animated movie. And at halfway through, they're like, we don't know any of this. And you just have to trust that what you set out in that outline to begin with <laughs> was, was what it needs to be because you need to just follow that and, and trust what you saw originally in that vision. Kevin Long was the only guy who sat back and said, this book's going to be huge. This is going to be big. And I'm like, I hope so, Kevin. He's like, no, I know so. It's going to be bigger than Turtles, bigger than Robotech. And I'm like... You're Bigger crazy. than Jesus. Oh, wait, no, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, how did it turn out? We printed 10,000 copies, sold out in three weeks. <laughs> That's big. Okay. All right. Yeah, that we is, printed, we reprinted 20,000. That sold out in six months. We, we sold like 45,000 copies of just the core rule book in, in the first, first 12 year? months. Yeah. I know when I wow. was in high school, when it first was came, 1990, I think it was when it came out. Uh, 89 or yeah. 90, I forget. Yeah, uh, 90, but to, yeah three people came to school pretty much the same day said hey we got this new palladium game i'm like oh you mean the guy that made robotech like yeah this is gonna be so much better <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh you know i i'm a fan i'm a fan but the reason i'm a fan and and i'm gonna segue into this is not just that you mashed up all these genres together to me that's just noise but what it allowed was to tell all these different stories in different parts of the planet and that's where where I, I saw the storytelling take a front seat with, yeah. with Palladium fantasy. There was some story there, but it wasn't front seat with Robotech. There was established story with TMNT. There was established story, but with riffs, it seems like now you were able to write your own, your own uh, narrative ticket, so to speak. And you can change how the world felt by going a thousand miles in any cardinal direction, yeah. you know? So, so uh, all of the world books and and what makes Rift special to me, I want I want to, I want your take on it after I'm done is that is that the world can seem like you're on a different planet if you yeah. move you know, like 500 miles that way or 200 miles that way. You know you're in a completely different world, 
And was that purposeful or was that an accidental happenstance or what? No, that that's exactly. You, uh, it's wonderful when I get I talk to people who really get it. No, that that was very deliberate. Uh, again, that was one of the things that I had been kind of fighting with myself and, and other industry people uh, for years. Originally, I wanted to do that with Palladium Fantasy. It was interesting that you mentioned that because I really wanted to make it um, a very unique, specific world. And people kept telling me, I mean, and I'm talking distributors, you know, Joe Budricks was insisted uh all my buddies and various uh, uh other at other companies were like no kev it's got to be generic and i'm like why and, and they're like no no you can't go world specific it's got to be it's got to be very you know as generic as you can get it look at D, &D. It, it, it's pretty generic you know tolkien-esque but everybody fantasy. played settings we it, all it, had our settings oh shit i know well and, 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 <laughs> and i'm still hearing this crap uh you know, in the late eighties. And I'm like, look, if, if, if turtles in, in the Marvel superhero game and Robotech, and, and there was some other stuff coming out, if, if these prove anything, these, these are as setting specific as you can get people want this. And they're like, no, don't do it. And that's no. where, when, when, when riffs was finally coming out, I'm like, what if I'm wrong? You know, what, what, what if I'm full of shit? You know, I, I don't know. And, and 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 thankfully I, I I I wasn't and people did want it and it it went great, uh, but no that's exactly what I want and like when people say when they call it, you know everything in a kitchen sink, it, that's kind of true. But what I was trying to establish is, as you pointed out, heathen dog, if you want to play this type of game, you travel five hundred miles here. And you can play whacked out cyborg, you know, old west. You travel here and you can play, you know, focus mostly on magic. You can focus focus on horror. You can vampires do vampires in Mexico or you know, uh Arthurian legend or or uh, fairies and leprechauns in Europe and whatnot, you know, or 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 the, the dark continent of Africa, you know, or or uh Japan uh future is now you know, time traveling nonsense, right? Yeah, that that's all great. <laughs> now that that brings me to a problem I have with I've had with some of our viewers. I am adamant one way; some of them are <laughs> adamant the other. Sh uh, Sh Shadow and Son, uh, we we had a we had a little mini debate on this. I personally do not believe that these different source books belong in the same campaign. I believe for for your, your set of characters, you make them in say Wild West. Or the, the New West, sorry. You, you, you make them in New West, they stay in New West. The reason being is because each of these source books, they don't seem to be balanced with one another, with their powers and abilities. Like if, if you go from New West to Africa, you are going to be either completely OP comparatively or you're going to be completely underpowered. Juicer and Uprising. It, it's it's juicer uprising is another one right there you oh my god you have that you can't go anywhere almost be, because <laughs> ju juicers are so much more powerful now so there's a there's a, there's a lot of uh uh work that the game master game master has to do to try and and uh either bump you up or bring you down to fit this new setting whereas other people say oh no it was meant to be interchangeable your group can travel across the ocean if they can make it you know, if they can make it across the ocean, they should be able to go to Europe or Africa or South America or whatever and fit right in. And my my argument is it doesn't work as well as you think. You want to put in the hours it takes to to actually, uh, you know, smooth out the problems with the with the uh, with the with the power differences. Good on you. I'm not I'm not making that time. So did you put any thought in, into into uh, making the settings compatible with each other, or did you just? I'm just made. There's another setting today. Well, sort so, sort of both. Um, so, you know, I'm one of these people who sit back and say, you know, everyone has their own approach and different style to to role playing, and what works for you may not work for me, or may not work for Max. Um, and, and they're all valid. Uh, it's just, you know, different people's perceptions and, and approaches. So, um, 
I can see someone playing the books as, as it's just this setting and then rolling up new characters to go elsewhere. And I can also have see people traveling from one place to another. Uh, well, yeah, no, I, I see that all too. But my, my question for you is when, when you were writing all these books, you were like, were in your head, were you thinking that, you know, uh, the, the argument was like, like Aaron Tarn, where, where all the people, where all the adventures going to be like Aaron who were traveling the entire world. Or were they were they mainly supposed to stay in one geographical area and only a specialness go to a different place? When you were writing it, what were you thinking? Was it going to well, be a whole world thing or geographic, maybe one, maybe two, but never buy all the books because one group is going to be just super weird traveling the world like that? Well, I think super weird is cool. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I you know, that that's what, one of the cool things about the rifts themselves is you can travel anywhere. You can travel to completely different worlds. You can go to a phase world. And yeah. as far as the power imbalance, I, I don't really see it that way because, you know, and again, maybe this is part of my, my, my comic book background where you have guys like, like Batman and Daredevil and Captain America who, you know, can't really go toe to toe with Superman or the Hulk or whatever. You just have to adjust how you play and how you the, the player and the character adapts to this new environment, whether you're, you're more powerful or weaker in, in that environment, whether your opponents are stronger or, 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 you know, lesser, um, you know, that's all part of, you know, and yes, it's culture shock, but that's all part of the game and sure you can do it. But the one, the one, the one interjection that I have for that, and this is based on my experience. And I can't remember if heathen dog is running the game or our friend Bob was running the game. Uh, but what we ran into is somebody wanted to take, uh, I think one was a glitter boy and one was a juicer, wanted to take stuff out of another book. And again, I forget who was running it. I'm just going to say Heathen Dog because he's here. Yep. But Heathen Dog was like, no, you can't do that. And the people were like, but I want to use this one instead because, you know, we, we are DMs that know how to say no. And it was like, no, that is too powerful for what we're doing. I, you get the base core book and whatever land you're playing in, whatever it happens to be, whatever world book it happens to be. Like the, the eastern half of North America basically was the main core book. Sure. And this, this person wanted to bring stuff out of another continent. It's like, number one, you've never been there. That's over there. You're over here. You're not going to be able to have that stuff. No. No, yeah, well, I, I, again, to me, that that that's that's sort of game master and context stuff. I, I agree gotcha. with you, Heathen Dog and Max. Where, yeah, if you've never been there, you can't suddenly have, you know, some something from South America or something from from Germany or Africa, uh, unless Just there's so much North America, story yeah. behind it. You right. know, if, if they traveled through a rift and showed up, and you know, you defeated them, and now you've got whatever the hell it is, a magic item or whatever. I also fair. think it's, it's totally fair and, and, and appropriate for the game master to say, I don't like this. It imbalances the game as I have it planned out. And so you can't have that. I think that's totally not to put that on your shoulders, but yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So well, uh, for, 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 for the crowd out there though, that that's asking this, the answer is actually yes to all of the above. I mean that that's, and we kind of well, figured yeah. that was going to be the answer anyway. Yeah. I, I figured that was going to be the answer to you. But uh, when, when you were writing it, you you were, you were, were you more in the mindset of the, the adventurers can now travel from one land to another and that would be awesome or not like more or not. Like I, 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 I thought it would be awesome that they could travel. Okay. Through. Okay. So I, I, okay. So, uh, Buckley, Sorry. Pa Patrick Buckley, but before you get banned, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can revel in the fact that yes, I was wrong. Okay. I, 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 I thought that, that, that these, these books were written to be campaign. You like you spend your campaign here because moving the campaign to another source book, would be too much trouble on the GM. The real answer is no, it was made to be done that, but your I, your way is valid as well. That, yeah, that, that's fine. So Patrick yeah. Buckley, thank you for watching and get the hell out of my sight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Uh, how many more questions or how many more things, topics you have? Because we haven't even started touching my, my list yet there, Heathen Dog. And I know you've got, uh, you've been kind of go going well, forward. The, with only, your... the, the only one, the only one I have is format. And I'm gonna let you go first. I'm gonna do the format wars. Okay. Last. Well, let's hit. The, I got a bunch of starred comments here, so let's okay. do that. Uh, should we do one give or should we do the giveaway right now? Also, are we yeah, yeah. good segue we'll for that? Yeah, okay, that's good. So let, let's do these. Uh, let's do these in person. So, oh, I, I'm saving that one. 
There we go. Uh, question on the same note as Team and Teen after the bomb. Are there any plans for a space opera mecha game similar to Robotech? I want to add an addendum to this. I actually recently was trying to overhaul <laughs> Palladium for my own sort of space opera game. And he was like, you got to do scrapers. You got to do the, the three galaxies and so forth. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I'm looking for something very specific. Well, I, I could use this as a framework. I, I wasn't looking for that. I'm absolutely looking for a Battlestar Galactica, maybe Star Wars-ish style just true space opera um uh, mostly human type thing is there, are there anything in the works based on that comment or what i just said there that that might be happening or could happen so so a, as you guys are probably aware i i have i have brought in a a partner mm -hmm. uh to palladium books and uh i'm actually gonna blame him for this <laughs> uh but but it, it's it's really it he's right absolutely right so i love what i do i love my my audience I always have a million ideas I often joke and say that I suffer from an overactive imagination. So I have ideas for, for everything. Okay. And, and he has like slapped me down and tied me down and, and subjected me to water torture and all kinds of things like Pavlov's dog. So that I no longer say, yeah, Max, in fact, we're working on this or we, we plan to do that because, you know, 10 years later, the fans are like, where the hell is it? Yeah, and like like, uh, like like the uh, magic book for uh, Beyond the Supernatural, second edition. Oh God, where's we that? get so many questions about that. We get That's so many questions from that. Where where's that, Kevin? Huh? Uh, <laughs> it's been what forty years? Come on, man. Where's it been? <laughs> so 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 Max, I can't I can't I can either answer or deny. Uh, you know, and, and I do want to say something to to your uh, heathen dog. Your your comment about those settings. Is I do want to point out, and, and, and again, my, my partner Sean Owen Robertson mm -hmm. pointed this out, is that those individual books, or, or or sometimes series of books like Lone Star, New West, Spirit West, Coalition Campaign, yeah, that most for most other companies, those three books would be their whole game yeah. line, yeah, and, and they would the run game. wild with it. I, again, I just I have so many ideas and stuff. And, and, and the design, that's why I tell people, like when people say, I don't know where to start with riffs. I'm like, start with what floats your boat. Start with what excites you. And if you never leave freaking Japan or the New West or, or, or England or that's North fine. America, it's okay because it's all about having fun. And the other stuff is there if you want it. It's fun to read. It's fun to play. If you want, when you, know, when you're, when you play for three years and you say, you know what? We're tired of cowboys and aliens. I want to fight you know monsters Dragons and leprechauns okay fine right. wormwood or you know exactly. England, there you go boom it, it's there and you can do it and i think that's a great answer also because and i ran into this this is part of the reasons why i kind of shied away from riffs at uh what it, we'll say in the 90s because there's that analysis paralysis that comes in it's like oh my god i've got all these D, &D books with all these settings that i'm barely able to keep up with because you know let's be honest when you're fans sometimes you like to throw too much into the mix <laughs> like and sure. all of a sudden you i, I gotta have all these books well heathen dog's got the book bob's got the book al's got that book i've got to get all these books too otherwise i can't keep up with them it's like wow uh but and that's why also why I like Heathen Dogs take where it's like, no, just focus on one. And I was like, wow, that's actually pretty smart. Why didn't yeah, I, I think mean, of you, that? Don't, you don't have to break the bank on this stuff. I mean, you focus right. on one, you, 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 you get your characters up to level whatever and un, until they get tired of it. And then you can play the same system, the same game, but 500 miles over there, it feels like a completely different world. And you just got to buy one book and then you get another year or two of fun. It's great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we just have so much depth of story and character yeah. that, that, yeah, you could spend, you know, 10 years playing in one area if you wanted to. Um, all right. All right. Hang on. Uh, Albert, The New Warriors was the best book of 8990. It had a six year run, had a great art and storytelling. I, I disagree. But well, before Heathen Dog goes crazy, thank you for the $5. I do thank appreciate you for the $5. <laughs> but uh, Night Stalker was a was the worst batman clone i ever see all my life it was, it was ridiculous uh nova had it was was uh, wasted for years whatever no moving on moving on <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh mark hawkman question how many kaiju are in riffs and why are kaiju awesome for ttrpgs <sighs> okay that's a loaded question yeah, I, I mean, it depends on, on how you look at it we don't actually have that many kaijus uh, traditional there's some sea monsters i think yeah, 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 
but but there's there's, there's not a ton. And no. again, I, I love everything. Everything gives me ideas. So I try to give people a little bit of everything. So if you want to play kaijus, they're there. You know, it's as That's simple awesome. as that. Crafty wait, says no, the wait, cover. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Now what? Night Thrasher. And more like Back Scratcher. Shut up. He's <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, the, the cover of Riffs made it a hit. A few people yeah, put that in the comments. Blind warrior women got a whole bunch of 13 year olds to buy yeah. your book. Don't, don't lie. <laughs> don't you try and lie to me and say that wasn't the point. Just stop it. <laughs> well, so it actually wasn't the point. Oh, you lie. <laughs> Keith, Keith no, Parkinson. you just feel dirty, heathen dog. That's your problem. <laughs> Keith, Keith Parkinson loved the female body. I mean, I love Parkinson's art. Whether I got one hanging up there uh, from the Sword of Truth up there. Uh, also, you know, he was one of my favorite for D and D. Did EverQuest. I love Parkinson art. You know, uh, obviously, that's not happening anymore. But uh, yeah, it, very no, good. He, he was great. And and, and uh, uh, Max, I think you said you you read uh, the the Rift's thirtieth edition. So you 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 saw sort of behind the story with with Keith. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those things where I was, I was telling, like I said, I worked on, on Rifts for like three years and I'm telling Keith about, you know, I'm going to have this magic and, and technology kind of combined. I'm calling it techno wizardry. And he got all excited about that because he had been thinking of some similar things. And he's like, I got to draw the cover. Promise me you'll let me do the cover. And I'm like, okay. And again, we talked and talked and talked about it. And then finally I'm like, you know, Keith, where's, where's the freaking cover? Because it's got to go to the printer in, in like six weeks. And he's like, oh, crap. And, and, and he had this other job he had to finish. And then so I get I get the the, the facts uh, of the pencil sketch. Um, and, and, and I look at it. And I loved it. I loved everything about it. You know, again, as an artist myself and having had life drawing classes, I don't really think about, gee, there's a lot of skin exposed. And he draws beautiful paints, beautiful women. And I'm like, yeah, beautiful women. What a beautiful juxtaposition of something beautiful, something monstrous and horrible, something that's clearly magic, something that's, that, that's technology. I just thought it was the perfect cover. So, I mean, I'm like, yes, approved. Parkinson's yeah. also the one that did the, the Wolf and Necromancer, right? Yep, hanging on my wall. Yeah, I, I've got that one actually hanging at work of all places. <laughs> uh, I, that That's my favorite well, of, of the Palladium series of his. That's absolutely my favorite one. Yeah, my, 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 I think, three favorites are uh, that one, number one, Rifts, number two, Atlantis, number three. So, uh, MP Watts, there's actually two comments here. MP Watts says, I'd love to visit the Palladium offices one day, and how does Kevin feel about vets visiting? Come on yeah. down. V visiting policy. Is, is, there, is there an actual visiting policy? Is there someone you can call for an appointment? Is there, you know, to, yeah. to walk around or buy some stuff at the end, you know, like uh, end at the gift shop, <laughs> follow, follow the footprints. And at the end, yeah, it's always the gift, gift shop. <laughs> gift shop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're always very open to, to our fans. I, I mean, we love you guys. So, um, you know, I think that's what people don't get is that, you know, we're just goofy gamers and comic book guys and movie buffs ourselves. And, you know, when people come to visit, it's just, you know, fellow lunatics who love all the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I would recommend calling first only in that, you know, I, I love to say I'm here all the time. Come on down, you know, bring, you know, a dozen books. If you want them signed, happy to do it. You know, if you buy some stuff while you're here and want us to sign it, we're all happy to sign them. even better. <laughs> the, the, the only reason to call in advance is to make sure, you know, I'm not out of town at a convention or, <laughs> Uh, out sick or running errands. I would hate for someone to, hey, we made a two-hour detour to visit Palladium because it happens. And, and, and gee, I'm not there. Uh, or, or half of us aren't there. That would suck. So, <laughs> so, so definitely, you know, call the office and, and make sure uh, that we're going to be around when you're coming. But yeah, otherwise, happy to give you the, the quarter tour and uh, Awesome. Great. I'll, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Hang on. That's fine. <laughs> Heathen Dog's behind him on the stream, now streaming from the I'm gonna location. I'm going to be behind you in 30 minutes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. A couple more to go here. Indigo Dragon says, good to see you again, Indigo Dragon. Haven't seen you in a while. The 90s was a great decade for RPGs because of all the great settings that came out in that decade. I agree. That, that to me, is kind of the golden era of RPGs before it got over-proliferated. Yes, that's my term. Nobody else here is saying that, but I really believe that it's over-proliferated. But 
there was still so much more than just like the five popular ish games that were there in the eighties. I, I, yeah. In, in the nineties is when the old world of darkness came out yep. and, uh, uh, Shadowrun Second Edition really took off, and it you know and uh, uh, when when did uh, Earth on come out? When did it become? Ninety two is the pamphlets, and I think ninety three is the book. Ninety three is the book. Earth on came out. Another great game. You know, a, a lot of great games came out in the nineties. Well, I and think people was, started to realize that you really could do anything. I, I, honestly, yeah. guys, it, it, it sounds stupid now, but in, in the eighties. I, I was told that you can only do two two genres. General fantasy. Uh, science fiction because of Traveler. Yep. And science fiction because of Dungeons and Dragons and RuneQuest. That was it. But and it was general funny. fantasy and science fiction. Those yeah. were your yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and whenever someone came out with something new, like like when Cthulhu came out, it was like, oh, well, it's an exception. Oh, when, <laughs> when uh, Champions came out, it was like, oh, it's an exception. And in fact, Champions, I feel bad for the Champions people because – they were huge in, in the eighties and early nineties and, and they're pretty much forgotten these days. Huge yeah, I just, champions a couple fan years right ago. I, I, I did a whole like series on them. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, personally, I, mean, I, I wasn't a fan of the game system. I hated you couldn't phases. play a cerebral character, you know, that. because you'd get your ass kicked by a guy who was a speedster who had like, 11 out of 12 yeah. turns yeah well yeah there was yeah, i forgot <laughs> about that the 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 initiative system yeah yeah um, the initiative system and the phases and all that stuff yeah it was it was a little a little weird but but, but they uh, were huge and, and they were good guys and you know it's like i think and what makes me sad that they're kind of forgotten is i think they and palladium were, were two of the companies that really helped show you can do all this other stuff mm -hmm. The hero oh. system as a whole, uh, outside of even Champions, with its fantasy, with its—I mean, I have the fourth edition of Hero System behind me there, where I got a lot of the vehicle books and so forth. Because so I was going to use it for a more modern type setting. I—I I, I like things. One of the reasons why I really like Palladium is because I can take something that we know how to play already, and say, "Oh, well, now we're going to do the fantasy version of. It. Oh, now we're going to do the sci-fi version of. It. Now we're going to do the ninja version of it. You know, you've got these different uh, these different venues with the same rule set. A more modern one is the Free League, uh, the Year Zero engine. I'm a huge fan of Free League because of the Year Zero engine because I can take all these different games and and put them to something you might already know because we played it once before. I, th I think that's important. Uh, let, me, let me get through these real quick. Got two more to do. Uh, that was just right there for Heathen Dog. So we'll. Move. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wanted Kevin to tell you you're wrong. Uh, there needs to be more Rifts Africa from Indigo Dragon, and Indigo Dragon also has one more. He says, question, I'm curious if Kevin has noticed an increase in Palladium's Rift sales after the Savage Rifts came out. And it's definitely going to be something that I want to talk about with the Savage Rift stuff. I saw Crafty yes. already post a question there. I, I warned Kevin yesterday that we're going to bring this up a little bit. So I, if you're okay with that, I'd like you to hold on to that for a little bit because I want to kind of get to, because that's more like the future of Palladium. And I wanna, I'd like to get that toward the end if you're okay with that. I... Uh Sure, I don't really see it as the future of Palladium. Oh, well, I love that! I, I love that idea. Yeah, we're gonna we're, gonna we're gonna put a pin in that. Even though I'm happy, <laughs> like <laughs> what's, okay. what's next? All right, no, no, that the, the giveaway's next. No, well, we got a, We got this right here. Boom. Okay, there you go. Great rogue star. Thank you, Kevin, for never doing multiple editions and just <laughs> reprinting the same material endlessly like other game companies. Okay. And I've got a question yeah. on that as well. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is another thing. Uh, a a lot of people uh didn't like the riftification this is this is this is a max's thing then like riftification and i understand it i get it you know i actually like the idea of personal sdc just just because of uh, the idea like a professional boxer you 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 condition your body to exactly. to absorb hits without taking significant damage that's how you do it you know that's that's how it's done and so having personal sdc is understandable to me on with that mindset i get it but a lot of people who started off playing your first and revised when they when they go to second edition they're a little bum that all oh, crap i got sdc here i got sc armor i gotta track there's more stuff i don't get it you know they just don't understand now the the question i have is were you really riftifying everything were you putting everything under the same rule set or was it what or did you have another idea when you were making your the, everything second edition? Yeah, well when we did the second edition, that that stuff all came out just prior prior to rifts. 
And the SDC, I, I Kevin Long turned me into a boxing fan. He, boxing was at sort of its golden age in, in the 80s with Mike Tyson and, and a bunch of other huge stars. Um, and, uh, and, 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 so your, your analogy to boxing is exactly dead on that. That's exactly why I included SDC. Um, and then mega damage was, uh, just the thought, uh, it was, it was just kind of like born out of, you know, if you take a baseball bat or, or a pistol or even a freaking shotgun to a tank. Yeah. It's not going to do anything. Happen. You, you, you just scratch your paint. Right. Yeah, exactly. You're going to scuff the paint. Uh, or chip it away, and that's it. And if you're doing giant robots and stuff, uh, it just seemed natural to have something mega damaged. I know it's a little unwieldy for some people, and you well, know. But what what would be worse is trying to keep track of hundreds of thousands of SDC right. yeah. to 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 properly simulate the, the the toughness of a battleship. It would have to be a million SDC. Exactly. I don't want to handle those big numbers like that. Right. So, so, so to be clear to about the rifification well, side, though, it, it's it's not the so for me at least it's not the MDC. Hell, I've got the only important rifter for anybody to have because I use Giga Damage. Uh, but <laughs> it, it, but no, I, I mean I like it conceptually. No, the the rifification and this is more how other people explained it to me using that term. I definitely did not come up with that term. But is about the fact that you look at the first edition, uh, like Palladium Fantasy book. It's that thick. Now it's that thick. Uh, you you look at uh, so, some of the other ones a, as they've grown, and it's got a lot of more. I don't want to call them cumbersome, but the rules in there to, to me just, it, I thought they were in a sweet spot with first edition to some degree. Uh, and when I look at second edition, like when I was doing some research for Heroes Unlimited, I'm like, I don't remember this stuff being in here and I'm not sure it's necessary. And I mean, and, but when I compared it to my Rifts book, I was like, ah, that makes sense. Now I see why people call it Riftification because there it all is in the Rifts book. And it just kind of made sense that that's okay. So that guess that's the equilibrium so, now. Yeah, it was. It, it, I thought it was a chicken or the egg type thing. But what you're saying is that the SDC thing came about just prior to Rifts. Yep. The idea of it came out prior to Rifts. And uh, you it was already in the works when Rifts came out to second edition everything up. It, it was. And, and so. Part of what you're seeing is, you know, unlike a lot of other companies, heck, most companies, we don't have, you know, first edition, second edition, second edition, 2.5, 2. Point whatever, third, <laughs> fourth, fifth, tenth. Um, so, so part of what you're seeing, and in, in, in some ways, I wish maybe we did things a little differently, is some of these books evolved, new ideas appeared, and some were kept, some weren't. Uh, and, and a lot of what we did, um, which people are, are, you know, looking back at and seeing as versification, is we were trying to evolve with the market. There was a period in, in the 90s, hell, most of the 90s, all the 90s, where people wanted nuance and detail and, you know, that kind of thing. So we started to provide more and more detail. And, okay. you know, there's OCCs, especially in riffs that are like, you know, these three or four OCCs, aren't they really just this? Um, you know, the Wilderness Scout's a great example. There's like a huntsman and a woodsman and, and, and you know, aren't they really all just variations of the freaking on the same Wilderness thing, yeah. Scout? Yeah, they, they are. It's, a, it's just a ranger. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, you know, that's what people wanted at the time. And, and we always are trying to, to listen to our audience and give them what they want. Okay. And so the problem is because, you know, exactly. years yeah. past, years past. Right. And, and our came. books stay in print, unlike a lot exactly. of other companies. Yeah. So we got books that are, you know, 15, 20, 30 years old that reflect that time period. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> and no one's going to buy them anymore be because the trends have changed. So if you're going to update yeah. a book, you have to update it to sell. And I get that. And so that's that that is a good reason. I mean, uh, the 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 idea of the whole bo boxing thing, that's the idea I had too. That's great. You know, the, the whole boxing thing uh is the is the impetus for uh personal SDC. Uh and you had that idea, it came out in riffs, you second editioned everything up. It wasn't because of riffs, it was no. just because of the way you well, what are you talking about boxing? Because that was in first in edition. Power. That, that was that was in first because I you know I have the revised well, edition of Heroes not, Unlimited not, not personal SDC that was equipment SDC yeah oh okay yeah 
Yeah, in first edition, first edition it was just, first yeah, you had hit points and you had uh, uh, armor SPC for your armor. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying now. Yeah. So okay, so uh, we're we're gonna go to the to the Savage World thing because we got questions. No, no on we got to do the giveaway. Got to do the giveaway. That's do the giveaway. giveaway and then Savage World. Okay. There you okay. go. Real giveaway. quickly, everybody, um, if you've been chatting, you're probably fine, but you might want to do this anyway. I'm putting in a chat right now. Uh, type a one into chat. Sorry, Twitch folks, this is only for YouTube. If you want to quickly come over to YouTube, I can't add all the names in otherwise. Yeah, if you're watching on Twitch, please go to the YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, search for Legion Myth. You'll find it. Come in, type in one in chat, and you will be you'll be put on the list. If you haven't typed in chat, if you're a lurker, well, now press one, hit enter. Two button presses. You can do I'm it. A, I'm going to start copying and pasting names. It takes me a while to format this stuff because of the stupid thing, so we can get into his question here in just a moment. Oh, God, I see it filling up quickly. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so many. If you chatted, you're probably, you're probably fine. If you chatted, yeah. you're fine. But if you haven't, if you're a lurker, if you just got here, because a couple people just got here, go yeah. ahead and type one in chat if you've just got here. E. Smith, I know you've been chatting. Hunter Ewok, oh, Indigo, still. I know you've been chatting. You shut up. They need, to, they, need to, they need to do their thing because it times out after a while. Oh, and okay, guy. Come on, man. Come on. All right. So I am. It, it is going to now officially be too late. I have grabbed everybody I am going to grab. I'm going to put it over here. We're going to do two giveaways. It's. Uh, I just have to make sure that this format's right. So while I'm making sure this format's right, uh, let's go into, uh, this. again, I, I had a few things to do beforehand here, but we'll get down to the Savage World thing. So the Savage World things, because I think there's a lot of misinformation when it comes to this. And just based on what we're you and I were England. talking about. Right. Well, what we, you and I were talking about yesterday um, Definitely assuaged some of even my fears, but I'm going to be very blunt about this intentionally so that you can correct the correct the message. Um, we don't want Palladium to turn into Savage Worlds. All right, go. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay. So 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 here's the thing. I I, I like Shane Hensley, and uh, I, I think their game is swell. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's not it's not my cup of tea, personally. Uh, it's got a huge fan following. Um, so, so this is what people need to know is, first of all, what happened was Sean Patrick Fannin, who I, I, I've known for years, um, he's a big Rifts fan. He's a big uh, uh, Savage Worlds fan. And he's tight with, with Shane Hensley. So for years, in fact, for like four years before the, 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 the Rifts game for Savage Worlds ever came out, um, Sean was trying to uh, Sean Fannin mm -hmm. was was trying to broker a deal where he could uh, get Shane to publish riffs as under the Savage Rule uh, Savage Riffs Rule uh, Savage World Rules, um, and, and and we did that, um, and you know I I trusted Fannin uh, and I trusted Shane, and I thought that would be great. Um, you know, it, it'd be an interesting uh, um, experiment to see if, you know, my world would translate over into another game system and how well that company would do with it. Uh, and, and they've done super with it. And plus, um, you know, you get a lot less work for some money. There you go. Well, and, and you know, I figure it was, it was good publicity and, you know, yeah. it's, the, you know, they do quality work. So I wasn't worried about it. I mean, it was a product line and, and a company that I that I knew and, and, and I, I, I knew what to expect from. So I figured it was a pretty safe bet. And, you know, it was originally just a four-year license. I figure, you know, they screw it up. It's over, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, 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 and in fact, it was in their development of Rifts for Savage Worlds that they hired a freelancer named uh, Sean Owen Robertson. And that's because Sean was and is a huge Rifts fan. Uh, like you, Max, he started with, with TMNT and then, uh, you know, Ninjas and Super Spies and Heroes Unlimited. And then he graduated into Robotech and uh, he was a huge Battletech fan. Sean's, Sean is your typical, Sean Robertson is your typical gamer where, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, 10 of the top game companies. He's probably played one or all of their games at some point over the years. But you know, among his favorite is, is riffs. And that's why Shane hired Robertson because he knew stuff really well. He was an excellent writer. He could coordinate other writers and artists. And so they brought him in. And that is in fact how I met 
Sean Owen Robertson because I was working closely with him to develop the products for Pinnacle. And the more I got to know Sean, uh, the more I got to like Sean and recognize his talents and abilities. Uh, and, you know, the bottom line for me was, you know, I'm getting older. I, I know I look youthful and I'm a platinum blonde, but, uh, you know, I, I, let's face it, I, I'm, I'm getting older. I've had a couple brushes with death. Uh, thankfully, have survived. And um, I don't really have any heirs to take over the company. Uh, I talked to, you know, my right-hand man, Wayne Smith, and he really isn't interested. And my kids really aren't interested. And, uh, you know, so it was pretty hilarious because there's a point where I'm talking to Sean. This is like four years later now. I've worked with Sean a lot. I know him really well. We've talked on personal levels about personal things, uh, our aspirations. I had an idea of what he wanted to do in gaming and he wanted to do, you know, other things as well as continue to work with, with Pinnacle. And uh, at, at one point he had these big plans and I'm listening politely. And I said, well, Hey, Sean, I, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into your uh, plans, but you know, I don't really have anyone to take over the company. And uh, you know, I really, I think you and I think on the same wavelength, we have this bizarre connection. He, he calls it a mind meld. Uh, I, I haven't had that kind of creative synergy with anyone since Eric Woodjick. Uh, okay. So I know how rare that is. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, I, you know, it's not like I would give you the company tomorrow. You have to prove that you can, you know, do this, but uh, dude, I think you're the guy. And that's exactly how I put it. And I said, you know, uh, I would love to have you become my partner. And he, and he like freaked out and was like, Oh my God, are you serious? I mean, this, you know, and we, we talked for like fucking four hours. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, the next afternoon I get a call from, from Sean going, Jeff, I haven't slept all day. I, I, I all night. I, I couldn't sleep. I mean, just when you say partner, are you saying that you would like, I would be like the CEO, and if you decided to sell the company, I would be out of a job. Or are you actually? And it was a weird thing because it was really very kind of like Willy Wonka without the contest, <laughs> right? I mean, who who comes to someone and says, "Hi, I really like you, and I think you've got the chops. Uh, would you like to take over my company? I'm not asking you to put in money. What well, happens you know, all the time in the movies? Yeah, in the movies, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, 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 and he's like. I, you know, I, I know he had to be thinking, is, is this real? Is this guy? Well, you know? yeah. I mean, this is 2022. If you don't have five lawyers doing this for you, then obviously it's a scam. Right. There you go. <laughs> yes. And, and, and uh, yeah, I only have two work, two two attorneys on it. Well, so, then you're, you know. you're, you're three short. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and we talked and talked and talked and talked. And, in fact, one of my concerns was – um. I, I was afraid that that Shane uh, at, at Pinnacle Entertainment might think I'm trying to poach his guys because that's, you know, that wasn't my intention either. I just recognized a kindred spirit who really, truly knows and loves Palladium on the same level as I do. And again, that that's rare. And, and he knows it pretty much across the board. There, there's a that's couple great. of a couple of settings he's not that familiar with. Um, Beyond the Supernatural is one. Uh, hey, we oh, got a video series on that we now. Video. We got video. <laughs> <laughs> well, he read it and loved it. Uh, you know, Palladium Fantasy. But everything else and, and riffs, you know, he, he he knows riffs easily as well as I do. Probably better because, I mean, I haven't gone over those books, you know, some of those books in 20 years or 15 well, years. And he had to. You know, he had to go through them and analyze them and figure shit out for the adaptation to, to Pinnacle. So it's okay. all fresh in his mind. All right. So what the the uh, takeaway that that I'm getting, uh, correct me if I'm if I'm if I'm losing it, is that uh, you're 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 bringing in this guy not because of Savage World. Savage World is just how you got to know him, but you're bringing him in because you've spoken to him, you've worked with him. And you and uh, you and he are on the same page with the current Palladium and Palladium's future going forward. Not necessarily Savage World, but its own thing. Just 
but moving forward, he has a vision that that you can you can die with, and you're gonna give the torch to him so he can do this, and you can die a happy man. One hundred percent. All right. Yeah, and, and your pinnacle and plenty are two completely separate yes. companies. Separate. Um, okay. And we're never okay. gonna be. We're never. There's no merging. There's no nothing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Sean Robertson, you know, is not like Shane Hendley's illegitimate son or anything like that. Right. He's right. Yeah. This, 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 this is no, this is no like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm hiring this guy from Apple. I work for Mike. He's going to run Microsoft. Oh no. He was a spy the whole time. Everything's Apple. Ah, no, nothing like that. <laughs> Correct. Okay. okay. Let's, let's roll. Let's get some people some stuff. Yeah, we'll give people some stuff, and then then we'll segue over to some uh, questions that came from our Discord because I know yeah, we're in limited Max time here. So, I I poached a couple of them. If your name isn't on here, sorry, I copied and pasted like four times. It did remove duplicates. I have a long list here, but uh, you know, there you go. You can see the list of names there. We're gonna spin it twice. This is what I will need from you. I have to verify. You don't just get to tell me, hey, that's me. So we're gonna put the link out there. Actually, Heathen Dog, if you can I'll get the link right ready, now. okay, you'll right. get the link ready. Click on okay. that. There will be a private chat icon on the right-hand side. Put in your email address. What I need you to understand, this hasn't happened recently, but it has happened in the past. I'm going to copy and paste it. If you fat finger it, that's on you, not on me. I'm literally going to copy and paste it. And then uh, ultimately, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to do my part in this as well, but I'm going to send all the information from our past giveaway and this giveaway to Kevin, and then we're going to work on getting you guys some stuff. That's just that simple. So, uh, all right, here we go for the first one. Oh, that's right. I set it up for 10 seconds. You're waiting. <laughs> and the first one is and $1. Indigo Dragon. We haven't Indigo seen Indigo Dragon. That. Outstanding. He, he, he leaves us for a while, comes back for one day, and all of a sudden is winning stuff. So, oh, he's a winner. Indigo <laughs> Dragon. Yeah, go ahead. Like I said, uh, go ahead and. Uh, uh, right, put, put it in the chat. Yeah, put that link. Uh, put that link out put there now. Uh, Indigo Dragon, click on this link. Come into the waiting room. You have access to private chat. Put in your email, and yep. then go. That's all you got to do. <laughs> put in your go. email, and bolt. That's it. No, it's never too early for rigged comments. In fact, never I can't give I can't give a prize away right. if you don't put in hacked or rigged. Right, exactly. But <laughs> technically, it's it's good form to wait until it's over and you don't win. Perfect. Because now, because now MP Watts, if you win, I'm going to say it's rigged and make him roll again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And for number two. Here we got, who we got, who we got. Drum roll, please. Oops. Oh, I, oh nobody wins. <laughs> Long shot. All right. Here we go. Now we well, know. I guess. Laugh at your, at your, at your thing. Well, now, 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 now I want you to roll again. No. Uh, <laughs> we got we got our two winners so again all right uh, fine heathen dog put the link out there go ahead and click on that you don't need a microphone because we're not gonna talk to you anyway nope, we're uh, not gonna put you on air you don't need to talk you don't need you don't need camera don't clothes. we Just don't care in, put it in private chat put your email in private chat and then leave and you get your stuff let me get a notepad open up here so that i can here it comes copy. here it comes rigged there, yep Rigged. We, know. we know it's rigged. <laughs> we rigged it. We know. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> Axel Wars. That's a good one. Longshot said it was rigged before he won. I don't think he should get to win. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I agree. If he thinks it's rigged and he won, uh, maybe you're just doing it so he. it looks like it's not actually rigged. There you go. But, that was it. So... We uh do, 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 do. so there's somebody down here that uh, doesn't match, but we'll see. Uh, hold on, let me check that private chat out. I don't. Oh, that's weird because if it's in the comments, I see your username, but if it's in the private chat, I don't. How do I verify that you are you? Okay. All right, I think I can verify you're you ish. I didn't realize that before. Man, Twitch is one thing, the one thing, the only thing Twitch does better. Is it has a whisper function, yep. so you know exactly who you're talking to, and no one else can 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 read it besides. Well, YouTube used to have it, but apparently people got bullied through private mute. Uh, well, yeah. All right, th it thank works. you. It's I got, got it. No, no problem. I mean, I wouldn't know anyway because if you've won anything from us before, I don't save that we, information. We've erased so. your email if you've yeah. won before, so we don't we don't keep records. 
just the in last... case the feds come and knocking, we got nothing. <laughs> all, right. all right, long shot. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead and click on that link. Pop on in here and give us uh, your your email address as well, and uh, we'll get the said we'll get these out to people. And in the meantime, we're gonna go back to uh, my questions here. And if and if the long shot doesn't pop in by the end of the stream, uh, we'll pick another winner at random after the stream or something. I'm not gonna take a lot of time for this. That's fine. We've we've given away a lot of things. We, we you know we know how to do giveaways here if we need to so all right so I, i'm going to take us back a little we have some questions from our discord and i've retailored some of these questions either combine them or to add my own personal takes on here just to keep the conversation going uh so we're gonna we're gonna go back in time a little bit now and we're gonna talk about if i can get to the right there we go uh we're gonna talk about just some of the products that you have might have and and so forth and let's just start with something pretty generic so yeah you saw the one about the riffs movie uh, that's that's definitely one. And and to be fair, we've heard about a Riffs movie for a long time. And I know that's just not something you can just I'm going to do this and it happens. But let let's let's see where that might be if it's anywhere right now. Are there any plans to still do a Riffs movie? So you know we would love to see a Riffs movie, a Riffs video game, Riffs comic books, Riffs everything, right? Um, you know that kind of stuff is not something we ourselves can do. It has to be a license or an option. And, um, you know, Jerry Bruckheimer Films had approached us back in, God, like 2000, um, you know, earlier than that even, because it, it took like four and a half years just to negotiate a deal. So, oh, wow. yeah, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, Jerry Bruckheimer wanted to do a live action Riffs movie. Um, he had a first look deal of Disney. So, so our deal was actually with the Walt Disney Company. Okay. And they sat on it for like 18 years and have finally let it go. Um, so, you know, and that's actually a good thing. You guys may be going, ah, oh, shucks. But, you know, something I, I respect about Bruckheimer is that, you know, he could have just shit something out and mm -hmm. he could have made a piece of garbage. And, and he didn't. He was trying to, when I, when I met the man, which was pretty cool, um, he said, you know, he wanted to make it his Star Wars. And, okay. you know, he, they just never got a script that they felt was, you know, something that they could turn into a blockbuster movie. And we were super excited, of course, because they're talking, you know, making it a franchise and, and all that kind of jazz. And we're like, yeah, please. You know, and at one point they were talking about, hey, let's have, you know, we'll, we'll talk to Ridley Scott. You know, I'm like, Ridley Scott? Wow. Uh, you know, and then they talked to Michael Bay and some other folks and. You know, just for one reason or another, it just didn't go anywhere. Um, I think they mostly weren't satisfied with, with the scripts. And, you know, when you're making a movie with a budget that's going to have, you know, a $200 million, you know, attached to it, it's it's got to be something that you're pretty confident it's going to fly. And, well, and they also won. not doing it 20 years ago versus now is CGI is so much better. And Riffs would definitely need a bunch of definitely CGI. Definitely need CGI, yeah. I know I'm watching Mandalorian. There's little scenes where you know the 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 Mandalorians are flying around. I'm like, Sam, it's they're Sam, they're <laughs> Sam's pilots. Yeah. So yeah, we would love to see it, but you know, it's it's kind of out of our hands. The other problem we're running into is a lot of companies, um, film and, and others. Like, like like this past December, we were approached by a, a big video game company. I'm not going to say who. Okay. And, and and they they made a really nice pitch, a really good deal. And you know they always do. Oh, you're going to run your company just like always. We're not going to interfere. Blah blah blah. But really, how true is that? And, and you know they want to own and control everything. And yes, that becomes a problem. You know. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, back in the '70s and '80s, you could have a gentleman's agreement and and feel comfortable if you know the guy. But now, like I said, you need you need five lawyers just to protect yourself to to make well, sure well, like like uh like like the whole oh wait you you own tmnt in in, in perpetuity for role-playing games <laughs> yes ha, ha. that's what i would have done <laughs> but you know <laughs> but but let's also look at another point of that fans you've got different types of fans out there and i can tell you one thing about me i'm an ip purist i stopped watching game of thrones after like season four or whatever it was because it wasn't anywhere near the books i mean i so what's great about a role-playing game is just a lot of background lore you can still do so much with it but when you get outside of that I, you know, as somebody like me, I, I'm going to go on here and I'm going to blast it. Like, this isn't Rifts. They didn't have one Samus pilot. The Borg looked like, you know, the, the Cylons from the new Battlestar. You know, it's like, that's not a Borg. What are we doing here? This isn't, you know, 
do it right or don't do it at all. And I'm I'm absolutely on board with that. But that's also what's cool about riffs is riffs you can almost do anything you want. And like, although ironically that that works against us because you're looking at it as a creative storyteller, as a game master. And other people are looking as a brand. That, well, and, and, out now, a well brand. Hollywood, it's not even that. Hollywood looks at it and says, we're, we're not imaginative. <laughs> no, it's it. too convoluted. It, they look at it and go, well, what, who's the hero? What's the story? We don't well, it get depends it. depends on your point of view, Obi-Wan. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, 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 but, but that's like not, not, not clear to them. Like, like, adapting batman or the tmnt that's easy there's a story you got their origin there it is you, you know that was part of the problem they look at you know riffs and they go oh my god we, we see all these great drawings and all the stuff and you know my agent my licensing agent same guy as ninja turtles he looked at our stuff and said kev if they make even a halfway decent movie this is a toy maker's wet dream you know there's just so much cool stuff great design oh yeah oh and yes the problem is they look at all that. And I think the big problem with Bruckheimer was they looked at it. They knew it was cool. They knew it had tremendous potential. They didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that one I of those sad times when you could just say, just start? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I, you know, like, I said, go wherever you want. Well, that, no, to, to even get that movie stone rolling, you have to throw so much money at it. No one's going to buy it if there isn't a completely fleshed out from beginning yeah. to end idea of it first. And for something like Riffs, which has so much in the pot, yeah. it, it's a risk. Even if you even if you look at one aspect like like uh, you, you can focus on Aaron Tarn right. and and her and, and her Cyber Knight companion traveling the world. You could do that. Well, that's a small fraction of what Riffs is. So maybe we can make more money if we focus somewhere else like on on the emperor you know? I, I i agree completely i also i also try to pitch it as go go streaming make it a tv show because then you can do all kind hell it can yeah, be like each walking season dead could or, be a different part of the same world it's an amazing riffs. idea You're exactly but, yep. riffs riffs is the marvel universe mm -hmm. i mean there's so many characters so many settings i mean you could have an Atlantis TV show. You could have a new West TV show. You could have the coalition versus magic TV show. Yes. The vampire TV show. It just goes on yeah. and on and on. Yeah. The, the and problem is it's too much. They, no, no, it's, it's not. Little, if, if, if it is no, for them is though, like from American their point of view, I, I agree with you completely. Both yeah. of you. I'm saying for them, they look at it. Cause first of all, they're looking at it from the bean counter point of view. Yeah. And so they go, but how do we know which one of these facets that we all just brought up in this conversation, but which one of those is where the money is? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly <laughs> where. American Horror Story did it first. They used the same actors, and they, they told a completely different story in a completely different setting in a completely different time frame every season. And Riffs begs to have that. You can have same actors mm. playing different roles, in 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 uh in different decades in different parts of the planet and have a completely different story but still have the familiarity of the people that you saw last season well, and you then the fan base will only grow season after season after season that would be wonderful you could do it that way you could do it walking dead style sure the problem is hollywood in all these big companies they're they're risk adverse mm and so they're well, just scared that that's why you see reruns of of everything or not reruns i mean remakes, remakes yeah the, uh -oh. the thing is i don't know how risk adverse they are because some of those remakes have very bad decisions and we won't get into that here but uh like uh, uh what well, you know it's uh what were they thinking oh i know what they were thinking but it had nothing to do with the fans well, so like battleship the movie for god's sakes oh but my god this is what they looked at about they, that looked that they, they said the only reason i have it is because i i want i wanted to to test my my movie server and i got it <laughs> i got it on 4k that's the only reason it was it was the most badass you know big explosion movie i could find like like michael bay's wet dream in 4k and i wanted to <laughs> test my machine to make sure it could handle it i never watched it since but, but but here's their logic hundreds of millions of people generations had played the game battleship therefore the potential market is you know you yeah. sunk my battleship <laughs> right. 
and, and, and you don't think about the story, the characters. What are you pulling out of the out of a, out of a game called Battleship? You, you know, and they went alien to be hip or something. I don't know. And and it was just weird, a weird movie. Yep. Um, and, okay. and but that's their logic. You know, hell, they're talking about making a Monopoly movie uh, based on the game. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be fair. They played a made a Clue movie, however many years ago. Yeah, so good one. That was good. <laughs> But yeah, I was going to say, you know, because it, it had a setting and characters yeah. and a yes. premise that you could build on. And it had multiple endings, just like the game. You know? <laughs> oh, I didn't you actually know that. Endings. It's all random. All right. Uh, let, let's let's ask another one here. So, I, and to be fair, I really like, because I could see it in just your expression. I like the passion that you put into that. I mean, you can tell that you that you like this, obviously your setting that you created, but, uh, you know, and just again, the way you did that was more about, we want the fans to have it right. Like and, and um, I I think it's awesome. So, um, have you considered now? This is, this is kind of backtrack a little bit. Have you considered digitizing the volumes of the Rifter into like a collection? It's kind of like what Dragon Magazine's done, Dunge, uh, Dungeon Magazine's done, put on CDs. Have you considered doing something like that with the Rifters for those of us or those of them who don't have uh, like all the copies or are missing like you know thirty of them or something? Um, we haven't. They they are available as as PDF books on on drive through. Um, all of our issues. Is there, is there a way to buy them? Say, can I can I go on there and just well, say I want one through one hundred? I don't care if it costs me two hundred dollars, but I just right. want to. It's, I don't want to click two hundred times to get each one. Yeah, no, I I don't think so. And okay. it's a great suggestion. Whoever whoever said that that that's a great suggestion. Okay. And I want to point out, we really do listen to our fans. Um, at, at the Palladium Open House, we had someone, and in, in, of course, Sean was like, "I said this six months ago," and I'm like. <laughs> don't remember yeah but i don't listen but, to you i listen to fans shut up <laughs> <laughs> and uh anyway someone said you know gosh i would really love to see um the 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 weapon compendium for modern weapons wait, wait hold on he doesn't think i get credit for that i said that two years ago <laughs> there you go and, and 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 we've been getting a lot of a lot of comments and, and this person asked for it during a a, a chat at, at a big panel talk where there's like you know 150 people and you know half the crowd said yeah and i'm like well, maybe we should do that. Right, and we right. did. It's available again now as the compendium of modern. I remember movies. Violence Solves Everything. He's like one of our big uh, Palladium followers. Yeah, he posted, he's like, Max, you're going to love this. It's out now. It's like, yeah, I, I took credit for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, we already asked about that. Uh, now, c c keeping in mind, like the, the Savage World question that we asked before, yeah. this came up off of Discord. And this is, a, this is another proliferation concept that's out there that really irks me but are you considering or have you considered a 5e compatible version of anything palladium uh no that's, that's, sure. i don't even want to know more after <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's all no that's fine all right yeah, um, we would have also accected f off and go, go jump off a bridge with you know what? I, you know, I even would have accepted, well. but I would have cried about it if you said this stream's over. <laughs> uh, so is there a Palladium Books third edition? Now, there's a couple of caveats to that. I got follow-up questions, so let's just let me brain dump on you because so you can take this whatever direction you want. Um, I'm combining some things here because these are on Discord. Um, is there a Palladium Books third edition under consideration? If you were to look at the entire Palladium Books Megaverse in order to create a third edition or a second edition revised, what would you change? And finally... Is there, this is a little bit different, but I thought it kind of fit the same narrative here. Is there consideration for a single unified core rule book to cover all Palladium games, then just do everything as a setting? So, for example, like you buy third edition Palladium and then you buy the Rift setting, you buy the, the Heroes Unlimited yeah, setting, you buy the Splicer setting, setting yeah. you buy. So I know that's a, that's, a, that's a big envelope that's there, but I kind thing. of felt so that we'll, they all. We'll start in the beginning. Is yeah. there a third edition or second edition revised in your vision? Looking I'm not, at I'm not saying like actually written down everything you said. So I, I'm one of these guys where, where nothing is ever written in stone and er, anything is possible. Sure. Right. And you know, again, based on our new policies by my tyrant partner Sean, um, I, I I can't uh, I can't go into details as to what we are considering for for the okay. future. Okay. But not a problem. everything everything's open. I mean, seriously, I and mean, okay. we're. We're, we've had all kinds of discussions about all kinds of things. Okay. And, and we have some, some very big plans that I think are going to uh, make a lot of our fans very, very happy. Okay. Well, so, so in the, in the what if vein then very, very happy there, there, there is a segue to this that I wanted to get to that may okay. make you very, very sad. 
the, the biggest problem with Palladium books, in many people's opinion, mine included, is the is the function of the book itself, the actual how it's laid out. Mm -hmm. There are some big problems. There there are some obvious places where you've cut and paste from other books into new books because the or at least it had to have been a different writer. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the font is different, and it's it's a section that's a, you know it's a cut and paste, and some 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 of the books seem to be poorly constructed. Uh, for for example, in uh in After the Bomb, it was the it was the best constructed combat explanation for Palladium System that we've covered yet. I okay. wish it was in in the in riffs. I wish it, I wish combat was explained to this in other books. So there there seems to be an inconsistency with the with the with the format of the books and that turns a lot of people off a lot of people because the books are hard to read an index would be awesome you know <laughs> stuff like that that would be great everyone loves a good index you know a quick find table that's fine but an index mwah, beautiful beautiful so if you were to move so, forward, so let me just let me stop you there and just say I, I agree with everything you said. Okay, so that answered that answered the question. I was going to say, if you were in your <laughs> in your in your fever dreams at night to move forward with a revised or third edition, uh, formatting changes would be on the table. Absolutely. Okay. Good. All right. And and, and that's one of the things we do because so I'm a technical writer in in my real job as part of so I, I work video conferencing, but uh, I do the technical writing because I'm an infrastructure guy and in that and uh, believe me. We've laid into books to the point where the creators came back to me on Twitter and said, "Will you please stop covering my book?" I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> uh, so, so this this is nothing like that. Uh, but you know, but so there are some nuances there that sometimes we catch that other people wouldn't. But it, it's yeah, I look at it like I would never get this past. <laughs> but so 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 again, have... you, you got to understand that 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 you know when I started a company. Like I said, I, I was learning and growing along mm -hmm. with everything else. And we would try different things here and there. And, and a lot of it grew or, or organically. You know, it was weird because, um, you know, with success, we're just trying to, you know, grind out stuff that people want. And, and that's awesome. But that, that has its own issues. And then, you know, the last 15 years, we've had, you know, one problem after another that made, you know, sure. some books better in, in some, some products and not quite as good because, you know, and, and again, we, we haven't gone back and updated and done complete revisions of things uh, yet. So especially, you know, you, when you're looking at our books, unfortunately, it's like it is 40 years of, mm -hmm. of changes and like growth that, and yeah. changes. And yeah. like, like Heroes Unlimited is, is really, love it or hate it, it's very different than most of our other games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we we, um, we have actually seen that from from uh, this year from doing mechanoids up to beyond the supernatural. The, the the skill system has evolved and changed. You know, education from from OCC and then going to rips back to OCC because of the state of the world stuff like to be that. Fair, most we of that's a good it. thing. Yeah, most of it's a good thing. It it, it 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 reflects the 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 general knowledge of the world. You know, I like it. But but I mean, I I'm very aware. I'm not one of these guys who's an arrogant asshole who sits back. By the way, I'm sorry. I keep swearing. I don't know. Oh, that's you're, okay. We don't care. I, I, I'm a swearer, and uh, oh, it's all good. But uh, you know, I mean, I, I know what our strengths and weaknesses is. I, I look at our books and, and I, I recognize what our flaws or what other people. Th it drives me crazy when I, I go into say um, Chaos Earth. I know you love Chaos Earth, yeah. Eden Dog, and, and I go into Chaos Earth looking for a skill that I know and love from Riffs. And I'm like, where the hell is it? And it's like, oh, that's right. We are trying to keep the page count down to this. And so I pruned down the skill list and it's not in this damn book. Uh, and sure, you could go and grab it from Riffs and incorporate it. It's not a problem. But it you, is. you can't do that too much because of balance issues. Well, and then and then and then you go into, you know, uh Nightbane, and and there's a skill that that that's in all of our games, but you know, it's the fifth freaking written version of it that's yeah, slightly yeah, it's completely different. different yeah i can see why that drives people absolutely it wrong. does yes format is a problem and and in in your fever dreams uh, extra <laughs> books in the future i'm glad that this is also part of that dream oh the, just just knowing that that this is uh an i, I don't I won't even say acknowledgement problem. of yeah 
of concern. There yeah, you go. Absolutely. Because to be fair, it's funny because he and I had a conversation about this probably before we started the, the year of Palladium books. And he was the one assuaging me. I was like, this is driving because I was looking at that science fiction thing. Like I said, I said, this is driving me crazy. I go to my TMT book. It says 40 plus five. I go over here and says 60 plus four. I go here and it's like, <laughs> which one am I going to use? And he's like, um, the right one for your setting. Understand that this is futuristic riffs. Computers aren't the same thing as I'm like, but it's future. Oh, but you're making a point. <laughs> you know? but, so, but also you're making a point too, because it's supposed to be one megaversal system. Mm -hmm. So it should all mess mesh seamlessly. And, and, and it doesn't, it meshes, but it, it certainly is not seamless. Yeah. The, there's, there, there's gaps that the game master has to fill in yep. with, with ad hoc, you know, yep. rules, which is whatnot, okay. Adjudications. So, all right. I, I, as I, long I, as you know that's coming. It's fine. Right. This next one I'm not asking because it's basically been asked and answered. So we'll go this next one. So we've got some riffs there. Lots of riffs questions. Uh, mostly about timeline things that uh, that will r rattle down here. So apparently we had a few questions with regard to advancing the riffs timeline. There's a feeling that there's still so much to cover without the need for advancing a timeline. Not really a question, but if you want to just answer... That, that was on my Discord. Like, he doesn't need to do the timeline for it. There's still so much of the world to look at. And then we got some world book questions. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I would agree with that. Although I like advancing the timeline. It keeps the story kind of fluid um, and, and living. Um, but yeah, in fact, that's been one of the mandates to our, our freelance writers is to don't give me something whacked out that's brand new. Build on what's okay. there. There's so much you can still build upon. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then this question might be nonsensical now, but it says, how do you plan to end the Rift's time timeline? End? Very good. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Answer All number right. two. Um, is there a full map somewhere of Rift's Earth? No. And, and by the way, I realize that's a point of, of uh, Contention. consternation for a lot of people. Um, the reason we've never done a full official map is because the world is kind of changing all the time. Okay. Uh, it's something we're considering doing. It, it, part of it, I didn't want to um, rope myself in. Uh, like, Heathen Dog, you were talking about how each world book is almost a separate thing unto itself. Separate world, yeah. So if I do some new area, all of a sudden we're, you know, here I'm, I'm world book Oregon. You know, it's you know, and, and I always research the shit out of stuff because I like drawing on, on real world things and, and grabbing myths and legends and, and you know, playing with those. And, and, you know, if I read, oh, my gosh, there's there's Indian mounds here and there's a sacred place here and there's this place of mystery over there, like like Mount Shasta, mm -hmm. um, it, it, not in Oregon, but I mean, you know, it's it's this place of, of weird mystery and disappearances and all kinds of weird phenomenon what if I did a map and there's no freaking ley lines or nexus points there. And then people go, well, what the hell, man, you know, we've been playing it like this all this time. And now you're saying there's 92 ley lines here. And it's yeah. Like, but the, 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 another reason why you don't want a, a comprehensive world map is because the world of rifts is 80% unknown. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's changing. not explored. Yeah. The, it's the not, no, it's not, it's not that it's changing. It's that you don't know what's there. I mean, well, you, you have to explore it, yeah. and then you know what's there. The rift opens and, up and, and changes an area. That that absolutely can happen. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and and then you know, uh, you're in in your game, the explored area can end up having different things in another game. And yeah. why why lock all the game masters into into one surprise when everyone can make their own? And, you know, and I, I understand it. why people love maps. I love maps. I, I used to collect atlases. I, I love maps so much. I, I was told I had a map fetish. I finally got rid of it, but I used to have bookshelves <laughs> of just maps. I used to I used to get National Geographic. I wouldn't even read them. I just pull the maps out and yeah, uh, as weird. But I meant to use them for gaming. Then I realized I never was. All right. So the last <laughs> the last one that I have here because I'm skipping that one also is uh, what about a world book for areas like Tennessee, Kentucky? I don't know why that was such a big deal in our chat, it was a but huge thing like like specific parts of the U.S. or like 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 in chat where we're getting right now from our, our, our European viewers like Italy or France or, you know, like it, you just have Europe, but they want more specific, ju just like you have Northern America. Well, we want specific. Yeah. Is is that idea something in the future? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I, the people who asked those questions. Now we're going to move into something a little, little more. Let get your take on when people have uh, criticisms. Is that the way to say it? Because we try to get people to play Palladium books, and we also know people who have played Palladium books. Like, eh. And so I try to compile what the generic. Reason not not just the people who are whining, not just the people who are like you know I heard something bad about him on the internet one day. Well, not that nonsense. But so, what do you say to people who think or believe the Palladium system is too clunky or too crunchy to compete with modern games, or it, that it's too clunky, too crunchy to grab the newer gamer? Um, I I, I my, my knee jerk reaction is 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 no. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. ours, too. Yeah. That's, that's you know, a good example is, again, I think we kind of covered a lot of it where I think a lot of it is more the presentation and um, with the formatting issues that you guys have mentioned. Um, if you look at some of the newer stuff, so, for example, whenever I have someone who says, I, I want to try Palladium, what would you recommend? I'm into everything. I say, grab Dead Rain because it's a great, kind of straightforward everyone gets it and it's it's the core of our rules i mean it's it's there and people get it and play it and love it and you know it's in your and it's the one i refuse to let us do this year for year like but i hate zombie trope he to the zombies. point where it's like i would rather not play a game oh my god i just despise the zombie trope so badly that's okay say so, see again to me i'm never offended by by it takes a lot to offend me because Role playing, especially, and it's one of the reasons I love role playing, is it's so versatile. It's so flexible. It's so, it can be whatever you, as an individual game master, even if you're playing. I don't care if it's if it's if it's D and D or 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 riffs or whatever the hell. You're gonna put your own spin on it. You're gonna cater to your players. We're all playing a different game. It is like the ultimate games role playing in imagination. And personal expression. So if you hate zombies, that that's cool. When when, <laughs> when I took that game over, um, because I wasn't supposed to write that game, it, it was written by a couple other guys, and, and I had seen uh, one of the main designers, Josh Hilden. Uh, I'd seen him play this game like a hundred times in, in it, like demos at at conventions, and, and I saw how people got really locked into it and how much they loved it. Um, and then he turns in this manuscript where I'm like what the heck it just wasn't the game i was expecting and i knew it wasn't the game that i knew the audience was expecting and and, and like you max i sat down and i said holy shit i gotta rewrite this game i gotta take all these great ideas and, and and really bring them to life and do this but i'm not a zombie guy because i never thought of myself as a zombie guy uh, and so I sat down and, and ironically, I mean, cause again, I love all these genres. Um, I was surprised at how many zombie movies I'd actually seen before. <laughs> and, and in fact, one of my early inspirations for, for starting my own company actually came from, from George Romero. Um, because I, I saw him speak about night of the living dead at, uh, at, at, a, at a convention at, at the Detroit triple fanfare. And, you know, he talked about how he had to do it on a low budget and how these, these are his friends and the sheriff was actually the real sheriff of his little town. And, you know, the, this was, you know, actually sausage. And this was, you know. The, the, the newscaster was a newscaster in the local area. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it was awesome hearing and, and, and seeing this guy who, I mean, he was only um, like in his 30s at the time. Uh, um, and, and I'm thinking. If he can do this, I can make my own comic books. Yeah, I, yeah. role playing wasn't even on the radar yet. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I can make a movie with with sausage and Bosco chocolate syrup. <laughs> I can make a damn role playing game. <laughs> so you know, it's uh, it's okay. Although Max, I do have to say, I think you might like our game. I think it's you should see chat lighting me up right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not, not the it's zombie not, trope. It's not zombie tropes, Max. Shut up. I saw I zombies on the cover of the book, and I said I'm out. It was that quick. I yes, I prejudged it. That's it up. Well, and, and, and there are some zombie tropes. I mean, you just have to. It's the genre, right? Yeah. But it's 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 you know palladium doing zombies, Max. So it's. <laughs> okay. At least crack the cover, you bastard. Well, right, I did let's... crack the cover of Splicer, so yeah. Uh... You know, for, so for example. Zombies don't eat brains in our game. What? 
they, <laughs> they, they, when, when they, when they look at you, when they see you, they see you as a glowing blob because they feed on your PPP, PPPE energy. And when they kill you, so there's a great mechanic in it that I, I absolutely love. And it, it was Josh Holden's idea. So they're stupid. The vampires. zombie moan. <laughs> so you run into, say, two zombies and they start to moan. Well, you better kill them quick because the moan is like a dinner call to all the zombies who were, are within hearing range. Body snatchers. And, and, and they start to follow the sound of that moan. Okay. And when they see you, they see your light energy your life energy as light and they go, Oh boy, food. And so they start to converge and, and that's like a, a, on a geometric level. So first it's two, then it's four, then it's eight, then it's 16, then it's 32. And you're like, Holy shit. And it creates this sense in the game of absolute urgency and terror. Cause at some point it's like, we can't fight all these damn things. And the reason they converge is even if one kills you when your life energy is released, it the doubled PPP energy it doubled yeah it and dispersed they all absorb it all exactly it all the zombies it. in the area get a piece of it that ain't zombie normal zombie stuff that's that's palladium okay that's beyond right. the uh, I'll, I'll have a stream one day where i'm unwrapping the package where i'm like <laughs> here you are guy i got the <laughs> um so, so to continue on with the with the question because uh because Again, we agree with you in the fact it's not. One of the things that people come to, well, it's so hard. It's so clunky. I'm like, how is it clunky? The only thing you have to worry about, yeah, you might have four or five actions per round. Who cares? It's cinematic. You're the game master. Have fun with it. You roll percentile for skills. You roll D20 for, for a combat. I actually like that because I now know, well, if it's a D20 thing, it's taking up an action around. If I'm rolling percentile dice, that might take 15 seconds, a minute, whatever, and well, you're out of it. Combat rules could be a little more streamlined. In my sure, opinion. sure. In in, yeah. in in just the presentation, sure. The, right. the absolute. Then we we talked about that with after the bomb when we read that. Right. We're like, holy crap! Like, oh, this, this is like is great. <laughs> this is like a polished gem compared to Palladium Fantasy or Heroes Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. So the, and the other thing well, I've been told. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Now I was just going to say that 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 you know also it was you know the last book Eric Rudjik Eric Rudjik wrote. So Ooh. you were getting him at at, at his peak, and uh, you know, like I said, we kept trying to refine and experiment with things. So anyways, go ahead. Uh, so I find that newer players are intimidated by things like charts. So let's just use like you know, a vehicle stunts. Well, it makes perfect sense for us. You start showing that people like, oh, this is getting confusing and weird. And I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. People like Pathfinder, which to me is crazy crunchy. But when they see something like the Palladium stuff, and, and for us, we look at it. You know, he said riffs. I'll go back to palladium fantasy where i just love the lore of the setting i just absolutely do uh you can drag anybody into that but then they start looking at these like i don't know if i can play that that's too confusing it's not your job to memorize that it's my job right. as the game master yeah you, you, know, you so stop trying to worry about being chart. a rules lawyer so what, what's that he log? at least to print out the chart to have it yeah you know so i can look at it you know like that's right. it that's all it needs to happen then I literally don't have the answer for them. And I was just wondering if you did have an answer for somebody who comes up and says, this just looks a little too complicated. Um, yeah, I, I, I like you. I don't really see it as that complicated. I, I do think so. So what, I think what you are seeing is what people have gotten used to. Okay. Um, you know, I, it's ironic. Every time I hear it, it's like, it's too confusing and too complex because and all that stuff originally came out in the 80s and 90s. It was like, oh, this is so much simpler it's and clearer. Than than look at yeah. Traveler. For the love of God, look at Traveler. The first edition of Traveler compared to, you know, Palladium. Uh, I couldn't even get into a Traveler game. So, no, I, I, I agree. I think you but, are right. I think it's a zeitgeist. Yeah. So, so the audience's perceptions and what they're used to has changed, and we need to change with it. Fair, fair. I only have one more fully fleshed out question here. And then, because I know we're kind of coming up on the time that you said you'd give us, yep. and, and I don't want to try to draw you out here, but I also want to make sure you have time to talk about anything. I don't care what is life, liberty, pursuit of happiness in terms of gaming and, and you and, and Palladium Books uh, to just get out there as well. But to the last one for, for me is, uh, so what are your thoughts? This is kind of a generic question. What are your thoughts on the plethora of games out there? I guess this was a Discord question. That's how I marked. Um, 
So some people welcome the diversity and imagination of there being like a thousand different tabletop RPGs. I don't know if you follow the OSR at all, but even within the OSR, these D&D clones, right? <laughs> you have like 500 of them that are sitting out there. Um, or others feel that like 80% of them just clog up. Like they, it, it makes it hard for the good ones to be found. Uh, so, so just generally speaking, I'm again, not asking you to talk badly about any company or any people out there, just in a general level. Uh, what are your thoughts about all this weirdness that you can get now out there? Is it great for the hobby or is it actually kind of over proliferating the hobby? That's sort of a tricky question. I think the answer is sort of both. Okay. Uh, on one hand, it's really cool that you have this vast variety. Like I said, when I was coming up, even into into the 90s, people would argue about how you couldn't do any kind, you know, you can't do this kind of game or that kind of game. I got a buddy with a company called Wet Ink Games. Uh, he's done some stuff for me. I kind of mentored him when he was younger, and I'm very happy his co company's doing really well. And he's got a he's got a role playing game called Never Coming Home, and it, it breaks a lot of the things that I I consider to be you know, things to avoid, like historical games generally sell like crap. And yet Never Coming Home is uh, set in World War One. Okay. But he's selling truckloads of these things. People are loving it. Um, and and um, that that's great. You would have never saw a game like that in the 80s or 90s, even maybe the early 2000s. And, and, and now you've got people willing to take chances and do things that are more exciting and different. And again, role playing is, is different for everybody. Right. So it's nice to have that variety. On the other hand, I do tend to concur uh, that there's so much stuff out there. You know, they always say, you know, the cream will rise at the top, but if you have to go six miles down to fight for that cream or to rise six miles, <laughs> it's going to take 20 so years for that to rise. Yeah, to exactly. I, I think there's some real gems out there that get lost because there is so much pedestrian grains of sand on the beach. <laughs> yeah, you know, there you go. You find yeah. Good one. yeah. Yeah. And, and how do you, you know, even if there's a ton of great books, how do you, or games, how do you find them? I, I mean, it, it's, it's more difficult than ever. On one hand you can say, Oh, but the internet, and, you know, and yeah. again, to me, the well, internet, yeah, you, YouTube took away the dislike button, so I don't know what games are good or suck. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Well, well seriously, I mean, it, it's it, it's kind of crazy. Um, and there's so much out there is how do you find it? Uh, you know, it used to be kind of tough when, when Palladium, you know, first 30 years of Palladium with print ads and that kind of thing and figuring out where is your best place to advertise. But now it's like there's no place to advertise. And, oh, sure, maybe you could go viral. Maybe you got the next big thing. But what's the odds of that? Is that one in a million? Uh, is that one in 10 million? I'll, I'll tell you when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's tricky. I had someone ask me just recently if I thought it was easier or harder to get your, your games produced and, and out into the audience now than when I started my company. And, and again, it's that, Yes and no. I, on one hand, it's kind of easier because you got Kickstarter and you can be absolutely nobody and get your game funded and get your game out there. But again, but it's harder, harder to, to get, get traction. Exactly. Yes. And, and then, okay, let, let's say you do a Kickstarter and a lot of companies just produce exactly what their Kickstarter is. So if they got, you know, 900 people back them, they, you know, they create a thousand games, you know, because they have to send the game to, Uncle Bob and mom and dad and grandma and Aunt Matilda. Yeah. And, and it may be some to sell at a convention. And then they're they're one and done. And, and it's like, how do they get into distribution? How do they continue that game line? Uh, and again, you can do Kickstarters, but it 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 it's hard. And are you ever gonna rise well beyond that, you know, nine or two thousand dollars, nine hundred or two thousand dollar or two thousand people audience? You know, do you want that? Is you know a thousand or two thousand people or five hundred people good enough? Because you're you know you're creating your dream. You're coming out of your books. I I, I don't know. It's it's tough as hell. Not for, that for, for me, I personally feel that the that the market is oversaturated. That that's yeah, sure. that's my take. I I but 
I also don't play every single style of game out there. He is much more into beyond the supernatural, Call of Cthulhu type stuff that, that I'm not as interested in. You know, other people who are in a chat like different types of games. So as far as the hobby goes, I don't feel that way. For me, it's oversaturated because when I'm trying to find, you know, a, a certain type of game or a certain type of this, I've got to weed through all the chaff, so to speak, to get to the right. one I like. And then when I pick that one, I get 40 other people in my Discord saying, no, you should have done this. You should have done this. You should have done this. I'm like, but this is the yeah. one I like. No, you know? the, 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 the crux of the problem is, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do everything we've said just to get it down there. Back in the day, it was harder to get started, but easier to get traction because you couldn't advertise everywhere. You had to you had specific areas where you put your advertising money that's more likely you're going to get traction but it's harder to make the actual product now you can make the product that's fine but since you can advertise everywhere you can basically bet on no traction anywhere screaming into the wind exactly you're 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 howling into a wind that other people are already howling into no one's going to hear you yeah that, that's a very good yeah. analogy okay. yeah so, so I think we go through, we finish up the star. We have a lot of star uh, chat because we kind of waited a while in this one. And then, like I said, we finish up with uh, whatever it is that you whatever want to talk about. If there's anything we you feel we missed that you think that folks out there should know, whether it's about the company, about uh, about something nobody ever asked you, whatever. I'd love to hear just, uh, you know, you, or if you just want to close out and say, love you guys out, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, we'll get through uh, some of these super chats here. Uh, forget comics. Oh, that's, okay, that one's done. We answered that one. You're I kept that one up there for a long time. There you go, Nerdy Ogre. Okay, so Nerdy Ogre again. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Kevin. I've been in a frenzy trying to panic uh, to buy as many Palladium books as I can in fear of the Savage World Rifts. And and that has been a common sentiment. Yeah, that's so. been a lot in our Discord, Kevin. That's been, that's been yeah, scaring, I, people, scaring people. Yeah, I, I'm really glad we addressed that because I, I think – you know, I, I don't think sh neither Sean nor I anticipated that because of his strong visibility with Pinnacle, they assumed he represents Pinnacle. I mean, you know, in, in his the work he does for them, so, sort of, yes. But, you know, he's not a partner in Pinnacle. He doesn't own Pinnacle. Pinnacle and Palladium are two completely yeah, different things. He's companies. not a spy. Not a <laughs> he's not a spy. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and, and he loves the Savage World system, but, you know, he loves our system, too. And, uh, you know, he's a Palladium fan first. Um, like we talked about yesterday, I like Savage Worlds. I just don't like all the games that convert to it. Same with 5e. I mean, to be fair, I like games in their original format because that's how I, to me, I, I'm a lot about feel. And sure. I just, the game feels right in its original format. Sure. Well, we get a lot of people, I mean, I, I must have had 20 people come up to me at Gen Con thanking me for you know, doing the Savage World license. Um, I argue with some of those those people in my Discord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and again, like I said, it, role playing is so personal, uh, and that's what makes mm -hmm. it wonderful. Is that, you know, for for those people, that's why we did it. You know, you love our settings, but you prefer the Savage Rules rules. Great, go with it. Play your heart out. That's wonderful. I'm I'm happy. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, Palladium and Pinnacle are two completely different companies. I think we have some very different philosophies. Um, and uh, we have no intention of turning our stuff into Savage Worlds or selling to them or merging or, well, or anything okay. that, like that. That's awesome. all you need to say. A lot of people are going to sleep better at night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so DM James, who's one of the people I do argue with because he likes the Savage World version better, but he's wrong. Uh, he also has a great uh, YouTube channel out there for folks if you want to check him out as well. But DM James for $5. Thank you, DM James. says, I think it's great that Max is having his father on the show. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, DM James, you always uh, love the jokes. Love you, man. <laughs> a lot. Enjoy your band. <laughs> oh, don't don't ban him! Please don't ban him. All right, uh, Darth Deek says, "Hey, you know, if you need somebody, he'll take the company for you." <laughs> I already got a guy. Yeah, there you go. You already got a guy. You're a little bit too late. Max is 64 years old, but looks young because of Noro. That's my wife. Uh, forces him to moisturize daily. Yeah. Hey, I got those ancient Japanese secrets, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Uh, weird guy says, "Is Palladium Recon the only TTRPG set in Vietnam?" Can't recall any other. Um, I want to say there was a couple of other games, maybe a long time ago. Um, yeah, that's something I want to do too. I want I want to do a little bit more of recon, and I certainly want to. Uh, I want to to 
re-release the original Recon, which was more of a role-playing miniature game. So there right. were it, comments it, it about Recon. Have the Palladium rules, though, right? It was no, like, it's just completely no. different rule it's system. Totally different. Yeah. yeah. People have asked us if we're going to cover it this year over a uh, year Palladium books. No. Uh, and it's exactly for that reason. It's not the because Palladium it's system. It's not the Palladium rules. Yeah. It's, I don't really consider, I mean, it's a play. I don't really consider it under the Palladium umbrella. Yeah. yeah. Of, you know, these are our, this is the multiverse. Yeah. You know, I don't consider it part of that. Uh, hey, I would agree. Click. Yeah. Uh, for five dollars Canadian, so I don't know, three fifty or something. Uh, Albert not a retro says any comic with art of Mark Bagley and the writing of Fabian can't say that name can't be bad. It's simply not allowed. New Warriors was fantastic, but well, he's still on oh, it. Still on <laughs> New Warriors. Okay, hey, but you know on, what? Man. He paid. He paid for it, so he gets to be right. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. All right, fine. Hey, I like Mark Bagley art. I don't know like, anything don't, about comics. All of that is literally over my head. So don't, I'm like, don't don't try and tell me Back Scratcher's good. Okay, I'm sorry, Night Thrasher. Don't try and tell me he's good. All right. Stop it. Weird guy five six four uh, says I have one demand for a wrist movie. Demand it. He does. Uh, they have to use the OG original Coalition boy Dead Boy armor. Okay, I I can understand that. Well, what's the too. difference? What, what, and plus, you know what? You using the original stuff means that you can have new stuff for the sequels. There oh, look at you. Bob Mar yeah. He's the, the marketing. I'm going to hire him as the marketing <laughs> guy. Uh, what, what's the difference real quickly between the original and the... Oh, the the uh, the, the, the original was much more uh, Death's Head type thing, whereas... Oh, with all the, the skulls, right? The, yep. Yeah, yeah. The whole skull. Oh, they they, you they took that out? Skull, but now it's more streamlined. Okay, yeah, it, fair the, enough. The, the, all the lines are simpler. There's less spiky stuff. Yeah. Oh, know, man. It's, See, it's that's my like... problem with Battletech art. I, know, I love, I know, I I know. love the art from the 3025 source book because it looks like walking tanks. Now they look like little ninja robots. I don't I want know. that. Yeah, the, 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 the newer Dead Boy armor is, is like is like 1950s car future concept type streamlined gotcha. stuff. And a lot of people have a lot of things to say about it. Okay. You know, fair, fair. Yeah, and you know, yeah. and what do we do? We have a lot of things to say about things as well. So I can't fault exactly. somebody for so that. I, so. I can't begrudge them. I understand. I don't just want a Riffs movie. I want a great Riffs movie worthy of the game. I agree with him. Uh, I would rather have no movie than a garbage movie like the previous D&D movies. Fair, fair. Okay. You know, and that's one of the scary things, uh, you, you know, when they option uh, for, for a movie or video you game. You lose a lot of control. It, yeah, well, yeah, you, you don't have yeah. control because in their Look mind. Weiss and Hickman. You're nobody. Yeah. And uh, you would think they would have learned from the comic book movies that when you keep the heart of the characters – uh, and you're true to you the source the material, it's going to be big, but you still see people grabbing IPs and just, you know, yep. grabbing I'm them. Sorry, uh, uh, abusing them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, weird guy, five, six, four says a core rule book is something I want. That, that was like, kind of a common that, theme that, that, on that, our discord as well. Unified Palladium theory book. That's, <laughs> <there. laughs> That's what we're well, looking the, You know, those, the various game master guides are kind of like that to some degree. I just thought about that. Huh. But I hear you. Yeah. Yep. Question: Real world references. Are people from the areas that are written? Up, oh wait, are people from the areas that are written about, or is there some kind of Wikipedia searching? Flying pig reference. <laughs> yeah, we had some things to say about that. Flying pig reference and after the bomb, some local landmarks from my hometown, etc. Um, well, we, we, it does pull from from real life, is what he said. He likes to do from history and probably yep. from real areas. Yep. So that's probably some. You did? Did you research local legend for some of this stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we do a thought. ton yeah. of research. Why yeah. wasn't there a biggest ball of yarn in Minnesota? <laughs> because it burned out. <laughs> yarn right. burned. Okay. Why isn't there Paul Bunyan? Oh, they moved Paul Bunyan. Because the scientifics made a nest out of it. There, <laughs> there you, you go. go. This is why I hate bugs. I'm telling you, that is why I hate bugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move. Oh, man, Nerdy Ogre. But Dead Rain, see, here we go. I only clicked on one, but there are a bunch of whole ton of chats. But Dead Rain doesn't really do zombie troops. Fine. We'll find out. <laughs> Uh, oh, for five dollars, weird guy five six four says Palladium could use quick start set of rules for a free low page count without a lot of the, without a lot of the content and skill. Something to teach a new player. That's okay, uh, now, a that, bunch of bunch of games do that. RPG a lot now. They they have free quick start guides where yeah. you give simple combat, yep. simple character generation, and a simple setting, and then give people the option of three four different OCCs and let them let them run and. Maybe 50%, 10% of those people will, will buy the real book and you'll make money for free. That's the idea, yeah. and that's that's what he thinks you should do. I think you should do it too. <laughs> <laughs> so something that everyone has to realize, and this 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 goes to 
why 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 books are often late uh, and why we're not doing certain things uh, and it segues into Kev, is there something you want to say and and it's just I think people think we're a much bigger company than we are because our books are high quality and slick and, and we use top art. Um, there's really just six of us here and, and there's only like like right now there's only like two and a half of us who are creative and of course we've got freelancers but you know some are better than others and even the guys who are great you know they're strong in one area weak in another like 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 Matthew Clements who I love dearly um, you want someone to write prose and 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 color text there's nobody better when he's on there's nobody better. Not not me, not Woodjick, nobody. He he's great. You start getting to the stats and game balance and game rules. You know, he's weak in that area. He hasn't gamed a lot. Uh, he hasn't game mastered a lot. So, you know, we have to go back in and put in a lot of extra work um, cleaning those up and making them 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 work. Um, you know, there's lots of things I, I would like to see out already. You guys had mentioned uh Beyond the Supernatural and Beyond Arcanum and Tomes Grotesque. Uh, you know, bizarrely enough, after or um, Beyond the Supernatural is one of my favorite settings. It's one of the games I play regularly, especially at, at conventions. I, I, I love it. Uh, I want those books. I wanted those books out, you know, 10 years ago. Um, as a business person, I have to sit back and say, Gosh, I'm going to sell three times as many Rifts products, mm -hmm. a new Rifts book, as I am a BTS book. I so really figured that was going to be like when we talked yesterday for a little bit. I really thought that was going to be the answer about the after the bomb stuff. Well, that's cute, Max, that you like the fluffy animals and so forth. But I've actually got trying to make some money here. I was very <laughs> interested in hearing what you said, because you said that you even said it here is that it's doing better than what a lot of people it, think. It is, and it's been a renewed thing that we've really seen in the last couple of years, but especially in the last couple of months at Gen Con, it was probably our our, our fourth best-selling product. Um, Take that, it, heathen it, dog. It, especially the core rules. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, All right, move on. Yeah. Let, let, let's let's do this. So I, I smash. I did have your question. It was literally the last question. I skipped it because of time, but I will put it up here because you paid for it. And Kevin can answer it how how he feels like. Um, I asked this question on Discord, which he did. I, I have it right there. Um, but Max skipped it. Feel free to skip it again if it's short on time. What advice would you have for someone trying to get into the industry? And to be fair, Smash is trying to write his own game. Uh, he's okay. got it on our Discord for people to look at. Uh, into the industry now with just a system and a setting. Yeah, I, I, I have some advice. I just want to say something. I don't know what your time is. I mean, I can give you another half hour or so if you want it. Fair. Well, we, we, you, you said two hours at first, then three hours, and I'm not the type of person to use your people's time. We're already at three hours and yeah. nine minutes. So oh, I, I, I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, as, far as, as far as designing your own games. So uh, the first word of advice I would give you is uh, a word of advice that a, a comic book artist gave me when I was – you know, trying to become a comic book artist. He asked me who my, who, who, what artist I thought was the best, the best there was. And I said, uh, I said, there's really like, like two or three guys, but you know, Jim Steranko, Frank Frazetta, for those who know, have any idea who they are, uh, Neil Adams, maybe who passed recently, which is sad. And, and he, and I said, yeah, I want to someday, I want to be as good as Jim Steranko or, or, or Frank Frazetta. And he said, why be as good? Why not shoot to be better? And, and that really resonated with me. It really struck me. And it's like, yeah, so so look at the guys who you think really nail it and, 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 and study what they do and then try to be better than them. And then the other thing is be true to yourself. Um, everyone has an opinion. You know, maybe they're valid, maybe they're not. You need to kind of assess that. But be true to your vision. Be, be true to what you think works. And then the other important thing for me is you're creating something that is, is an entertainment vehicle. So it's not just about you and not just about your vision. I know I said be true to your vision, but it drives me crazy when someone says, when I point out flaws in their stuff and, and, and they go, but this is my vision and I'm going to stick with it. One of the um, 
things that we have here, one, one of our working principles, top working, working principle here at Palladium is it's not about you. Like if the three of us are all making role playing a role playing game or a source book, it's not about whose idea is best or what's what. It's about how do the three of us or six or whoever make the best product and by best two for your audience you got to think about your audience you're just doing a vanity project it doesn't matter do whatever the fuck you want mm -hmm. whether you sell 10 or ten thousand, it doesn't really matter because it's your vision and right. that's what you want to do but if you're trying to do entertainment and you're trying to do something for an audience you need to think about what they want what they need what their pain points are right um right. So if you uh, if 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 you have a system and a setting and you give it to ten people to look at, you uh, you want say between seven and eight people to say I like it, and then you say okay now I know I'm not just writing for myself. Other people are going to buy this. I might want to move forward now. And you know don't be crushed if you come out with a game and it sells like crap. I have known so many people, you know, because a lot of lot of young companies, because they know my history, and you know, I started from nothing, and, and built everything up. So I get a lot of young companies coming up to me and, and asking for advice, and, and and it makes me sad when I see a, a company that comes out with, you know, here's their core rules, and in, and of course they put their heart and soul into it. They probably spent, you know, at least a year, maybe maybe several years developing it. So I understand it. I, I get it. I do the same thing. But it comes out and it falls flat because it, it just it has flaws, it has problems. You got to be open to that. You got to be aware of your your strengths and weaknesses and try to fix your weaknesses or bring in someone who can fix them for you if you have that weak spot and you just can't do it. But I see so I, there's this one company that came out with a game in a source book, sold like absolute crap, and I advise them to just you know okay you know you did it you learned a ton. Move on to something new. Yeah. Absorb the, out, absorb the feedback from the loss and pour it into the next thing. Right. They right. came out with five source books for a game nobody wanted. And they went out of business. Because they all sold like crap because the first game sold like crap. And it's like. And they didn't make what? any changes. They, they didn't right. change direction. Right. Right. And, and it's yep. like, it's okay. Everyone falls on their face once in a while. Um, you know. Just don't make it's, the same mistake. It depends on what you're doing it for. If you're only making it for yourself and you hope that other people that that's a different tactic. Yeah, whatever. That's, that's not know? a business tactic, though, to be fair. Finishing is a win at that point. Right. Yep. Exactly. Hey, look, yeah. I got it done. I got a nice little cover on it. I, you know, I lost money on making this, whatever. But I, absolutely on the business side is what you're going for there. Can't agree more. And, and yeah, learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's okay to look. If you learn from your mistake, was it really a mistake or was it a learning opportunity? You know, exactly. I mean, if, yeah, I mean it, if if your first book fails, but you're able to try again with a second book, if you if you've if you've uh, if you have your your mistakes cataloged and you think you fixed them in the second book, that first book was not a mistake; it was a stepping stone to right. the second book. Exactly. As long as there's another book, the failures are are just learning. That's all. Right. Is. I mean, yeah. I could have done that. Come on, when when Mechanoids came out, it was not a smash hit. No. I, I didn't go boo-hoo, I guess I'm no good. I'm just gonna go away and do something else. Um, you know, I tried again and again. We came out with Valley of the Pharaohs, our first box game. That sold like absolute crap. Again, I could have said, Oh, I guess we just don't have it. You know, that, no, we learned from the mistakes that we made. Step one, learn how to spell. Learn how to spell that too. <laughs> So, James Seymour, I asked this question, and you can find it if you go back and watch the stream. Um, the quick answer is uh, there isn't one yet. Maybe, if we're lucky, if we're really nice and buy more Palladium products. I said that. He didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't say that at all. No. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So, uh, is that it? Is that it for... Uh... That, that's it for Star Stuff. So, uh, any okay. anything you want to leave us with? Yeah, anything you want to pitch? Anything you want to tell us about the future that's coming out really soon? or anything about the, the state of the game or whatever, go ahead and throw it at us. Yeah, um, there, there, there's a few things. Um, awesome. <clears throat> so uh, um, Sean and I have been working on two separate projects. Uh, he's been trying to finish up uh, t Rifts, Titan Robotics. Uh, it's going to be a great book. Um, I Is would that say like a company probably... source book? Like a 
a fictional company yeah. source book? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Titan Robotics. Like, it's like, like Narani this. Industries or Triax right. or whatever. Okay. Got Another it. Northern Gun. Yeah. Yep. Except it's it's you know secretly controlled by Archie Three, who's a crazy oh, machine yeah. gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's going to be great. It's, it's going to be a toy box, but it also has a lot of information about Archie and, and his machinations and that kind of thing. It's, it's going to, it's got all kinds of cool avenues for adventure. Well, that, that, that's a layup after, after the mechanoid source book too. I mean, Archie had to make so many robots in that setting that this whole, you know, cr creating an industry to make money and to get people, if that's a layup, that's whatever, that's like a obvious thing. So I get that one. All right. And, and, and then uh, um, we are going to, Sean and I are going to work together to get uh, Rift's Beast Jerry Volume 2 out. Uh, oh, I should also mention that, uh, you know, because Sean has experience with Kickstarter, um, we're going to do a short Kickstarter for Titan Robotics. And for those who are Savage World fans, there'll be a Savage Rules conversion with those uh, available through the Kickstarter. I'm not giving uh, money. That's, that's conversion, <laughs> not... It's not, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. It's just a step too close for me. Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> uh, I feel the same way about Mutants in Orbit because Mutants in Orbit is a TMNT book. Screw your riffs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> see, see, I I paid for that one. I think maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Go ahead. And, and then um, I, I'm trying to finish up uh, um, Creature Feature for Beyond the Supernatural. Oh, awesome. Um, the original concept for it was we were just going to grab a bunch of monsters and, from that appeared in the Rifter, add a couple new things, and just send it out sort of as a reprint uh, collected thing. And uh, uh, the original writer and certainly my, my, myself have, have gone in and, and I, I have rewritten pretty much everything, expanded and and uh done cool stuff with uh all the creatures so okay you really uh, stepped in on that one you you really you, you really stepped in a cow pie on that one because uh the 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 response in chat is going to be okay wait a minute you spent all this time making a a creature book when where's my god Dan's magic where's my magic <laughs> i know <laughs> It's coming. You promised it in the first book. You promised the magic. At this book. point, does it need no magic? Book. I mean, I'm just you know. <laughs> well, and it does, and magic's going to be cool. It's it's, it's going to uh... be cool. It has to exist first to be cool. <laughs> well, <Wow, even laughs> you said future shit, so I'm telling you, <laughs> when the future happens, it'll okay. be cool. <laughs> So real quick question about the B series too, because I did pre-order that like I don't know months ago. Um, am I on a list somewhere to say, yes. hey, okay, that. So yeah, you know, that, also it was, it. you know, we had originally, uh, and I know some people are frustrated with this, but you know, sort of the pandemic happened. Yeah. Um, I, I think we did our like own little insider, so, sort of like a little crowdfunding thing that we call the Palladium Insider. And, uh, you know, there's hard covers that are, are coming for it and other things. And, uh, sure. you know, it was supposed to come out, I think, in. I don't remember we did that in 2018 or 2019. I think we did it in 2019. It was supposed to come out in 2020. Obviously, it's 2022. Sure. But, I mean, you know, for, for all of 2020, I mean, I was pretty much, for most of 2020, I was the main guy here. Um, you know, everyone else was uh, laid off for a while. And then, uh, um, you know, we got the PPP loan, and, and that helped us. I was able to bring people back, but it was crazy. And... You know, it's just been wild times, and in the print industry is like going through Armageddon. It's it's insane. Well, um, print and shipping, like together, yeah. it's a double whammy. Yeah. Yeah, and we're doing our best to hold prices down. Um, you know, we were shocked. We saw some some game companies charging seventy and ninety dollars for a core rule book, and I'm like, yikes! Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're trying to avoid that. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's been crazy. We've been dealing with a lot of stuff, and then while it's awesome that Sean is here. Um, you know, there, there's a learning curve and, and there's, you know, orientation kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with him because, you know, we're, we're plotting the future of the company. We have a five-year plan that, that's ambitious and, um, you know, if we can pull it off, it's going to be astounding. And, and I think we can, uh, he thinks we can, but, uh, you know, we're working at it and, and that causes okay. delays. And, and, you know, our goal right now is Sean and the mind both and everyone here at Palladium is to 
try to get as many of the books folks have been waiting for um, out over the next year or two. Um, Excellent. So that, and that includes the Beyond the Supernatural books and, and a lot of things. That's, that's awesome. You know, we, we will have to reach out to him at some point in the future, you know, talk talk to him as well, see what his visions are as well. So, you know, we won't ignore him, but... Uh, yeah, no, he's... I, yeah, in fact, he, he told me to tell you guys that he'd be happy to come on the show. And likewise, oh, if you want me back at some point, I'm happy Every to week? Back. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, right, I, don't, week. I don't need him. The YouTube money can go to you. I, I, he did not get the fired. The algorithm doesn't give a shit about me, all right? <laughs> I don't know. First, first I, 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 I would love it if, uh, if you have have time in the next couple of weeks or whatever just sit down and watch a couple of any of our rpg digest videos that end in dash one that were made this year it's all palladium and it's all non-political it's all us going through the book talking about the rules talking about our experiences and if you like it great if you don't tell us we'll bring you on so you could yell at us <laughs> and we take right, it that, that's the thing is we we'll, we'll honestly we'll we're, we're not we're, hypocrites we'll in what we do here I, I know some right people have some heartburn with our segment twos and i get it i get you know but this isn't segment two so i won't go into that um but no uh th that's the thing if we're wrong tell us we're tell wrong us and why yeah. well and it's it's hard to be wrong i mean it's your opinion you know, maybe no, I don't agree no, with it. No, I, I believe <laughs> people can be right and people can be wrong. Well, I mean, I agree too. So I, I, yeah, I, so, uh, yeah, if, I think it's a gamer nerd thing. I really do think it's a gamer nerd thing about my edition's better. I mean, back in the old days, the edition was my edition's better than your edition. You know, we still do that to some degree now. Uh, oh, yeah. so, uh, I, you know, it's all sometimes they don't see it. And I, and I know, you know, that when people watch this, they can be, like, huh. No, I don't know if Kevin would want to be in the Friday Night Show stream. It goes until no, 3 little, in the morning. A little, 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 little too dangerous. Yeah, that, goes, <laughs> that also goes until 3 in the morning. Uh, yeah. But uh, any, anyway, like, no, we'd, we'd love to have you back on. Obviously, you've got a business to run. We'd love to have Shauna. Maybe have you both on one time to knock heads back and forth, uh, just to, uh, talk about things. That, that'd be great. Because um, we want to have people on. I, and I finally remember the name I didn't remember yesterday. It was Tim Kask. Like, like I couldn't, like, uh, he was one of the editors for Dragon Magazine. And I'm like, oh. you know, people are always like, you should know who this is. I'm like, no clue. But, uh, I mean, obviously we follow Palladium books. We've been playing them for a long time. You're the creator of it. How can we not know your name? So you know, th we absolutely love to have you on again for anything Palladium rated, re uh, related. I can't talk. Um, that'd be amazing. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can work out. That's for sure. Anything uh, Max is wrong, Heathen Dog is wrong, y'all are wrong. What? No! <laughs> I'll figure out You're why Max is wrong. I'll figure You're out why later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ban him, Ethan. Dog. How is he still here? No. Uh, any, any, yeah, any, any, any final things? I, I know that was. I think that segued a little bit from a from a question Heathen Dog had. But uh, any any final comments that we've got, uh, or we don't, but uh, you've got for us, sir. I, I just you know stay with us. We got some great things happening, man. Sounds good. And, and I like I said, I think. Uh, I think the stuff that we're going to unveil over the next five years are just going to blow people's minds. This has been asked a few times. So I'll quickly slide this one in right before we get out. Uh, uh, any, any riffs novels, any new novels planned? I kind of avoided asking like what the plans are, you know, based on how you answered a couple other questions, but let's keep yeah, yeah, going I in just, there. So. I, I, yeah. We've got a couple guys working on novels. In fact, one guy I think is working on a fantasy novel. Uh, and I think we've got two people working on uh, riffs novels. Um, you know, just novels, they, 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 they're a whole different animal. They take a lot of work and yeah. time. You know, that's the other thing. You know, it's just writing takes time, man. <laughs> you know. Oh, yes. That, is, that has this, been my This heartburn. is actually a good idea, weird guy. After, at the end of this year is our year of Palladium. At the end of this year, we're going to end with riffs. That's the idea, mm -hmm. ending with riffs. And after it's all over, we'd like to bring you back and – and uh and uh t talk about riffs more more specifically you know we'd, we'd like to do that sometime toward the end of the year i, I don't know when we're going to finish oh another we're... thing i would like to mention is and this kind of weirded me out i didn't think about it i, I should know because palladium fans are uh uh are, are so Rabbit. loyal and, and so well versed and everything <laughs> Look at that, my riffs notepad too. i've been writing on <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah where's my riffs notepad uh, but uh, Rift's Manhunters, uh, Rift's Coalition Manhunters yep. is not the Rift's uh, Manhunter RPG that was produced back in the, like, 94. 
uh, under license by another company. I had so many people at Gen Con come up and I would mention it and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we know it's just a rerun or, or updated version of that space opera game. Right. And I'm like, no, it's everything you could ever want to know about the coalition. It's citizens. It's, it's psychics, uh, dog boys, kill hounds. There's 80 new, uh, psionic abilities, which by the way, uh -oh. heathen dog would work great with uh, beyond the supernatural. None of them are real powerful or, or, or unbalancing. Um, I, I think he's watched our streams before. Cause he said you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Max and I both don't, don't really like psionics in games. It doesn't feel like it works, but I will say in palladium yeah. psionics does fit better yeah. in the system than any other game I've played, including I, I hear psionics and I cringe. That's like the zombie thing yeah. for me. I, I don't care what game it is. Like, oh, I'm gonna play a psychic. Yeah. Like, I'm out. Most in most games, psionics is breaking. In yeah, I, I agree. Psionics is not breaking. Yep. And it is as actually on par with magic. It's weaker than magic, but you can use it more times per round, so it evens mm -hmm. out. Yep. So yeah, that that's good enough. So uh, yeah, the whole coalition okay. uh, history, lots of new powers. Uh, a couple of new, a couple of OCCs like the like the kill. Uh, well, well, the kill hounds from uh, um, Lone Star, but but the kill hound oh, right. and and uh, the dog boys, you, you learn more about them, their background, about, about their histories, and how they came and about, how they fit within coalition yeah. society. Yeah. Um, and then there there is a new dog boy that's sort of a magic specialist. There you uh, go, crafty. And, and that's kind of bizarre. I, I, you know, we do our Christmas surprise packages and. Uh, um, People get to comment in them. Uh, ideally, brief comments. Uh, sure. Those three pagers are murder. <laughs> and and uh, um, somebody said, "Hey, you got all these dog boys listed, but but there, but, but there's no corgi, and we love corgis, and, and you should put a corgi in there." And, and just for the heck of it, I uh, go get it. I, I, I looked it up, and I'm like, corgis have an interesting history. Um, so there's, there's a Corgi dog boy now that is a magic specialist. It, it's a little different than your normal dog boys. Uh, they don't use magic, but they, Crafty's they can, happy. They can be <laughs> <them>. <laughs> there you go. All right, and, um, and, and as far as OCCs, yeah, there's, there's the nine, there's, uh, there's the, uh, they're really not OCC so much as, uh, a new interesting thing about, again, controlling how Emperor Prosa controls his citizens and, and that's with the uh, psyops uh, thought police basically um, and but but it's not as maniacal as you might think they, they actually no. try to you know well, it, and cause yeah but it's his whole thing is keep everyone uneducated de dependent upon the system and they'll actually support well, the system and, and, and happy yeah, yeah and they'll be happy doing it wait a minute so when I walk around and say I'm fat dumb and happy I'm playing right into his game that's Damn. right <laughs> And, and, and then there, there's yeah, there, there's nine different uh, CS Manhunters, which are basically psychic assassins, which both the use guys won't like, but a lot of other people will. And uh, there's some other cool shit in there. So that's awesome. That, that's it. Seems like you're still putting out a lot of stuff. You've got yeah. a lot of plans going forward. I, th I think our, our fans for this are gonna be happy. I, I think at this point, though, I think we've we've kind of talked ourselves to a point where we're probably Absolutely. done here. Yeah. I would love to invite you back, and you know, I'll, I'll send you an email. Uh, one quick question for you, because it's actually gonna tell me how we continue the rest of the stream here. Did you want to talk to us about anything just offline, or do you want me to shoot you an email, say with the names and addresses of the folks, and then just worry about all the rest of that uh, behind the scenes? What whatever works for you. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably worry about the rest of it behind the scenes. But yeah, I, th I think we'll do that because because I'm gonna I think we're gonna do what we call our segment three, which is viewer call in. But uh, you don't need to be here for that. That could get a little weird. Because uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I know these people, and when I can't control them, things might go on. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, sure. nothing but the sincerest thanks uh, for you thank being you. here. Yeah. Oh, thank uh, you. This was a great time. I I can't believe like I do eight hour streams sometimes for the Friday night chill stream. Uh, I can tell I do that a lot because this lasted three and a half hours and I'm ready to go for another three and a half hours, but you know, we all have lives. So uh, I think our chat was very, uh, very appreciative of it based yeah. on all the comments that I'm reading and this couldn't have been more fun. So thank you for being here. Oh, and you're very welcome. And thank you for having me. I had a blast. That, that's great. great. I, I hope to do this again. And like I said, I'll shoot you an email within the next couple of days. Like I said, with the information, then you can follow up with whatever you need from me and, and we'll work that all out. So thank you very much. No problem. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you. All right. Got it. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day. Take care.